Wrestling is all the rage right now in Nogi Jiu Jitsu. Um, Coach Jake, Ironclad Wrestling. Wrestling is a part of most grapplers game that they just avoid like the plague. It's a real vulnerability for some higher belts that are otherwise great grapplers. It does not have to be that way though. At Ironclad, we're doing some game changing work and we've created some innovative stuff for you guys. You need to go check out Ironclad Methods. There's a Wrestling for Jiu Jitsu course. Pick that up, it'll help you out. Whether you're a white belt that's just looking to get some self-confidence or an upper belt that could definitely use some improvement. If you're trying to get your wrestling game right, you gotta go check out Ironclad Methods. We'll see you on the mat somewhere soon. Hey, yeah, me too. My name's Brandon McCatherine. I'm a 10th Planet Jiu Jitsu black belt under Eddie Bravo. Here on this channel, you're gonna find all kinds of content. I do one minute Jiu Jitsu hacks. I got full seminars, instructionals, Jiu Jitsu breakdowns, and then every Friday, we do a show called Not The BMAC Show, which that'll make sense, just watch it, it'll make sense. My goal is to be your Morpheus. You could be Neo, but let me be your Morpheus. Let me pull you up out of the Jiu Jitsu matrix and let you see how simple it really all is. The PGF is the only Jiu Jitsu league in the world with a preseason, regular season, and postseason of submission grappling. This is not your local BJJ tournament that your friend's dad runs. You're going to see men, women, quintet matches, EBI matches, underdog upsets, remarkable comebacks, and so much more. You name it, the PGF has it. This is a jiu-jitsu competition unlike any other. All major sports have a league, and now jiu-jitsu does too. The PGF is the brainchild of 10th Planet Black Belt, Brandon McCaffrey. It's designed to be entertaining for the fans as well as beneficial for the athletes. With over 20 matches every night of the regular season, each athlete will learn and grow on their way to the postseason in hopes of winning PGF gold. Each regular season match is six minutes in submission only. No overtime, no judges' decisions. If the athlete wins by a kill or choke, they are awarded six points towards their total. If the athlete wins by break or joint lock, they are awarded three points towards their total. If the match ends in a draw, both athletes get zero points towards their total. The top eight point scores of the regular season will be entered into the playoffs where they will face off in 10 minute matches with EBI rules. The playoffs are single elimination. Only one man will be left standing. You're not gonna wanna miss the world's only jujitsu league. It goes down live and free on YouTube October 26th and 12 noon central. It was insane. I, I think yesterday was the best day we've had in PGF history. We saw huge upsets. We saw really exciting matches. We're starting to get some clear leaders here. Uh, so I think, you know, Dane Leak, who cares about Dane anymore until the playoffs? Because he's already in. Today is all about the bubble guys. Who is going to make the top eight? Dane Leak, sorry. You were the story the first two days, but today we're moving on to the guys because everybody is still mathematically in the game. Everyone. Every single person. With what we saw with Samson and Alex Hall, Alex scoring 14 points, going from 0 to 14, and then Samson going from 0 to 16. They are now sitting at 3 and 4, but they need to replicate what they did yesterday. They went from 0 to hero. And who knows, man? We got Reese Lefevre in there, one of the favorites, zero points yesterday. Mm -hmm. David Garcia, one of the favorites, zero points yesterday. Evan DeWitt, awesome day, jumps up. He's in the seventh spot. Manning Leverett, one of the favorites, zero points yesterday. So, guys, I got to ask you, of those guys, are any of, like, who's missing the playoff, do you think? If you had to pick one of those top dudes, who's going to miss it? Oh, that's tough, man. Um... Well, I don't know. So a big question is, uh, for Reese Lefevre, how bad of a pop was that? Because I've, I've heard there, there were multiple pops. 
Well, against Nick Soft, I mean, you know, Loud. <laughs> he had like a, a little pop, then kind of a tearing, and then a big pop, and then more tearing, then he finally tapped. That, that's what the cameraman told me before we came on here, and that's just scary. I mean, I know he's a young man, he recovers quickly, but yeah. um, I mean, it, it, is he diminished? Is he degraded? Uh, if so, that, that could be dangerous for him, but he's also like one of the top talents here. We all knew that coming in. Um, let's see, Juan Martinez, he's on the bubble too. He's tied with Reese for the eighth spot. I mean, he's, he's shown some consistency to get, you know, uh, submissions uh, each day. And I think he's just getting more and more energy from his fans back home at Children's BJJ. But um, can he keep it going? I don't know. Really, yeah. Leslie? I just don't know. Like, it's all based on the matchups, I mm -hmm. think. You know, I mean, who's going to, like, who is karma going to favor today? You know, I mean, it's not <laughs> karma. It's the coaches, you know, putting up their lineup. But uh, – it's all a surprise. Like, it's all, uh, you know, who knows? Yeah, Alex Hall. You could go on a, a streak like Alex Hall did or Samson, you know, and get 13 points or, you know. Uh, so, I have no idea. I have no idea. I mean, Matt, I, I think uh, a question here is, like, you know, who could come in? I mean, we could, we have, you know, Nick Soff, again, got that awesome uh, submission against yeah. Risa Fever. Anthony Molina. You know, Anthony Molina, the, the top male uh, pick of uh, Kamoy Anderson. Who, who we've all said has amazing smooth jujitsu. He's had a lot of success in different you know, formats, different promotions. Uh, he's a guy that could rip off two, three, four subs and be right in the contention again. Uh, even Mario Gayor, who's a PGF vet, uh, slick, amazing jujitsu. I mean, if you maybe if you've been a little bit meaner, Stephen Dana with that crucifix yesterday, maybe mm -hmm. he's in there. Maybe, and you know, those are some good names. Got Nathan Chambers down there, who's at three points. Jacob Art, Matthew Boyles, all at three. T.J. Steinbach, one of you know the people's favorites, right? He's in at two. I mean, all those guys still have a chance today. I think you know you're kind of looking at guys like Eric Longar, Wesley Carter. We just haven't seen the offense from them. I think I feel the same way about like Jacob Mashburn. I just don't know if Jacob has the offense. But a couple of those guys, like uh, especially like Matthew Boyles, TJ, uh, Nathan Chambers, uh, Stephen Dana, Mario, and Anthony, all of those guys to me are still in play. They can score 10, 15, 20 points if they get the right matchups and they're just on today. But they could also keep other people from scoring. I mean, well, you said Jacob Mashburn, yeah. I, we don't have any. Uh, like I've said in the, uh, the past couple of days, usually in the PGF, there's a couple of dudes that are just getting dunked on. Giving up six, six, six. Every single day, they're just giving up sixes left and mm -hmm. right. There ain't nobody like that this tournament. I mean, chokes and uh, kills have been very, very hard to come by. I mean, just scoring points in general. That's why we're looking at uh, such low scores for even a lot of the top guys. But I think Lindsay was pointing out that like some of these guys have, have kind of taken that role of the stopper. Like mm -hmm. You were saying Jacob Mashburn, Caleb putting out his student out there to stop the rock troll from tearing through their ranks. Right. Uh, great strategy and you know, just great coaching by, by Caleb this season. Yeah, go out there and get a draw. Yeah, and those extra points, uh, I mean, could come into play on this last day. I'm going to be interested to see, like, what if there's a tie at eight? What if we got three, four dudes tied for the eighth spot? Are we just going to add like everybody's in the tournament right and figure the bracket out from there or they're going to be a tiebreaker like it'll be interesting to see how that plays out well one thing that could affect it is that team point we've seen uh, team ironclad have some really good luck they've gotten team points two days in a row they top of such and such that first day and so everyone got every, both teams got the bonus points yeah. but ironclad got the bonus point yesterday in position. so if there's a tie Four that bonus point from the team that points them uh, that makes the most points throughout the day that that could settle it right there Coaches, all right we also want to say that Brianna is not going to be competing today. She she sustained a neck injury, and she is not competing today. Last I'd heard, uh, anyone that was supposed to go against her is going to get an automatic two. Is that – you were in the rules meeting. Yeah. Is that – did that stand? That's correct. That's been, that's been the standard since PGF Season 1. Mm -hmm. uh, if your opponent cannot go, then you get two points. Because you, you weren't guaranteed to get a submission against them anyways. Anyway. And so you get a guaranteed two points, so that's something. Yeah, all the ladies have been tough. I think we've seen, you know, Nakaya's kind of uh, been the clear favorite. She's kind of run away with it. She's nine points up right now coming into day four and, or day three. And I was telling Nakaya, I was like, look, strategy-wise, uh, you've got four matches today. Why not just go for all four subs? In this first block, if you can beat Joani and you can beat Emily, 
it's done. It's done. You know, but the match I was really telling her about, like we we want to we want to finish Tara. You know, I, I thought we finished her in the first match, and um, you know, doesn't matter, right? right? We're moved right. on. Um, it's in the past. <laughs> but for today, it's like I don't care really about any of the matches. Like, let's get a let's get a victory over Tara. So I think we're gonna see her really come out aggressive in that match. Well, you know, Tara won't back down. A hundred percent. That would be awesome. A hundred percent. She's not scared. So we're now moving over to. It's the final day of the PGF yeah. regular season brought to you by Subversity. Today we will crown our first women's champion ever and find out who makes it to the playoffs tomorrow for the men only at pgfhome.com on pay per view. Our first matchup of the day features Team Cantrell versus Team Ironclad. First up, representing Team Cantrell, Coach Kimoy Anderson. Athletes, Joani Chamberlain, Anthony Molina Valdez, Noah Randolph, Charles Muxo, Matthew Boyles, Juan Martinez, Samson Fomabout, and Emily Cyanide Hauser. This one. And their opponents, Team Ironclad, their coach, Matt Elkins. Athletes, Nakaya Jackson, David Garcia, Alex Hall, Evan DeWitt, Nick Saff, TJ Steinbach, Wesley Carter, and Kata Davis. Your first matchup of today from Team Cantrell, Emily Cyanide Hauser versus Ironclads, Kata Davis. And this is really important, guys. On that pay per view, it's $30, but half of that money is going to the competitors. So 15 of your dollars is coming to the PGF, 15 of your dollars is going to the athlete of your choice. 50 50 pay per view split. That's insane. I mean, no other promotion's doing that, trust me. And so if you're like, hey, I really want to give TJ some money, buy three, buy seven, buy ten streams. You know, he's going to get $15. Um, he's going to get half of that $30. So he's going to get $15 uh, per stream buy. But we're going to start off with Emily Cyanide Hauser going against the very talented Kata Davis. Kata has been one of the star athletes for me. Didn't know a lot about her, right? We saw her up there and have that crazy match against Anna Kanaj. Mm -hmm. But uh, she's been a, a showstopper this week. She's had some of the best finishes, two Baranto Platas, and um, she finds herself in third place. I think mathematically it's going to be pretty much impossible without all kills today to win. Um, but, but it is her birthday. Know. What? It's Kata's birthday. Oh. <laughs> well, she might go on a birthday tear. Who knows? <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully she blew those candles out on the first blow and made the right <laughs> wish. Because it's going to take that today. I mean, she, she's pretty far back. She's at 14 points, though, and I would say she's had a good performance. I know there's a couple of matches, particularly that one with Joani. She was not happy with how she competed against Joani. She ended up getting killed, um, got choked, rear naked, and she just she feels like she shows and is much better than uh, she was in that match. So I'm going to be really interested to see that. I think uh, Kata today is going to be fighting. I think all the ladies are going to be fighting for pride. We got Emily looking for this outside heel hook. Kata uses the free leg, clears the knee line. Now Emily's on top. I think what I really like about Kata is this. It's been mentioned before. She's just a real submission hunter. Yeah. She, she's going to go after you from every position possible. Um, unorthodox. He said Rata Platas, uh, Bicep Slicer, uh, anything she can get. She's, she's coming after you. Yeah, you're right. It's unorthodox attacks. I kind of look at the, there's eight women, and Kata's one of the big outliers for me uh, of the women, right? We see here, right, uh, she's attacking the arm saddle position. 
So Allie's Treasure Trove and uh, Kiali next up BJJ. Uh, the the winning team, the winning coach gets five hundred dollars. Uh, that that's that's what the winning coach is, is playing for, and and, it, and they do have a, a big part in this season because they set up the lineups, um, yeah. and and the strategies involved, and you, you've probably seen on on the social media, uh, some of them have been really you know, working with their team beforehand, uh, so that's what they're they're playing for there. Yeah, and the the winning team is just the winning team for the season. The team does not progress onto the finale. Yep. Yeah, it's a great incentive. So I know, like talking to Kamoy. Um, he was like, man, I want that five. I want to win, but I definitely want to win that 500 bucks. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just under three minutes. Yeah, Kate is on a good attack here. She's been working at the past minute. This is um, a movement um, I've seen a lot from like guys like Robert Deagle and Sam McNally. This isn't quite the Sam bar, <laughs> but just that attack, and it's really nice. And she's going to try and turn this into a Tarico Plata. So it's a little bit different than we've been seeing. Oh, nice. Now she's going to switch back to the arm bar. Man, I love the way she attacks the arms. As we talked about before, she needs kills. Yeah. I, I don't think – I think most women uh, – most of the women have kind of conceded that Nakaya is probably going to win this season. And so I think we're just going to see them going out there free, you know, just, hey, I, I'm fighting for pride today, and I want to get some, some highlights. Oh, that's right. Just, you know, make fans. I mean, and, and folks, if you're not a fan of her, something's wrong with you. Oh, now she's switching to the – oh, nice. man. Oh. So that was a Tarico Plata. I don't know how to spell that. Give it up for your winner by submission, Kana Davis. C-A-R-I-K. Plata. Yeah. Wow. Okay. You have some really, really – Shorter locks. How do you do that? Yeah. Um, Dave Brennan actually sent me a YouTube video in spring about the Tarika Plata. And I was like, well, I already do the Broad Plata, so I started working on that. And that's something I was looking for. If I could get one thing this PGA season, I was hoping it would be a Tarika Plata. Well, you definitely, like, sparked my interest in that. So thank you for that. Uh, we'll see some more from you later. Hopefully. Yeah. Great job. It's a good start to your birthday. Kayla Davis, everyone. <laughs> All right, she, she goes, up, goes up to 17 points with that break. Yeah, and just another highlight. Uh, she's had a phenomenal season, and I'm really excited to see her versus uh, Joani in the next match. And next up for Team Cantrell, Joani Chamberlain, her opponent from Team Ironclad, Nakia Jackson. Well, this is a huge match. Joani needs a kill here. She's down nine points. Um, and Kaya just wants the pride of having beaten all the women, you know. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. I told Nakaya, I was like, man, you know, Joani's going to be very aggressive. She's got to come after you. <coughs> and I was like, even a break here. Like, as long as you don't get killed, it doesn't That's really right. hurt you. <coughs> I told her, I was like, you know, these girls have to come after you today. We saw, you know, yeah, especially the past two days, some of the girls trying to really slow Nakaya down. See that closed guard again. Back into the closed yeah. guard. <laughs> and I told Nakaya, I said, you know, the biggest thing is two arms in, two arms out. Two arms in, two arms out. Don't let the triangle happen. If you get arm barred, it's only three points. You'll still be up six. And that's where the strategy comes in. I was kind of like, look, a lot of these girls have been stra like playing strategy against you. You've just been going out there and doing your thing. Use a little bit more strategy today, you know. <laughs> You've got a big win. If this match goes to a draw, this is a huge win for you. You don't have to do anything. But we like to be exciting. So fans at home, uh, the, the lady in bottom with the blue spats, that's Joanne uh, Chamberlain, uh, currently in second place. She's out of 10th Planet Atlanta and Rise Up BJJ. She's actually the owner of Rise Up BJJ. And, of course, Nakia Jackson on top in the Black Rash Guard, uh, 10th Planet Decatur. Joanne's uh, been one of my favorite people this week. She's just got such a great spirit about her. She injures her arm in that match against Tara LaRusa. Never, never says a word about it. Never. We haven't heard her say anything about that pop nope. she took. And she's just, she's fun to watch. She goes after it, mm -hmm. and she's a great black belt. Yeah. And, and 
and this is tough for for uh, for Jawani because again, um, Nakai doesn't have to open up. So she could just stall. I mean, yeah, I mean that's what I told her. Really said, boring. You don't have to take any chances. Like these girls have to finish you. They right. they need six points. Right. And you've set yourself up the first two days to, you know. Well, and if uh, Kaya did decide to stall and then Brianna is out, so, I mean, they would only get two points, that's really limiting the points that they could get today. I just don't think the whole Kage stalls. <laughs> I, don't, no, I don't think I don't that think happens. So either. Uh, you guys are asking about certain people's points. You can go to pgfhome.com, and there's live scoring there, so you can see everyone's points. Really nice work by both ladies here. And this is one thing I told Nakaya. I said, let's not go uh, play on our knees. Let's play a little bit more like the Rutolos. Let's stay on our feet. Because, again, they got to come after you. You see how she's forcing Joani to come up? Got three minutes left. Dakota Barnes, Dave Garcia has 14 points. Well, Nakaya trying to force uh, a head position, trying to get in on the front head. Because Joani's got that butterfly hook and it's going to be tough for her to. Two minutes and 30 seconds. Nice. PGF Season 4 is brought to you by Subversive, the world's largest jiu-jitsu team tournament. They're going to be in Miami on December 4th. Nice work by Joanne. You see Nakaya trying to get that front head position. Mm -hmm. She's been so deadly with it all week. Nice use of the guard, though. To push Nakaya off, and Nakaya's in a good passion position. Nice. Joanne using the pummeling to put her back in her butterfly hooks. Yeah, smart by Nakaya. Body lock. You see, you see uh, Joani trying to bother Nakaya's face. He's trying to get her to let go of that body lock. But Nakaya seems unfazed. Yeah, really, uh, it's a great match. I, I would love, this one of those, I'd love to see like no time limit sub only, you know. Mm. Both these girls are finishers. Uh, I think Joani could have opened up a little bit more in her first match. I think we're seeing now, like she has to get the finish. Yeah. And it's been a great match. She's oh. still dangerous. I mean, we've got 50 seconds left. Nice, nice work by both Don't you can get the bomb flu? She's going for it. Oh, yeah, she is. Oh, 40 she seconds. That. She's going to finish that. She's going to finish that. Uh, is jo uh, Johnny Joanne able so to tough. lift her? Is she lifting her hips at all with a butterfly hook, or does she have one in? Nah, no, she doesn't have it. Oh, this it might is, be. Oh, wow. Oh, you saw no. a little panic right there yeah. from Joanne. But she was able to bump out of it. Yeah, that was close. Really yeah. nice work by Joanne. She's Ten so seconds. Tough. So tough. Beautiful work from both ladies. <clears throat> you guys are asking about the finale. Uh, the finale will be at noon Central Time. Um, and yes, half of, with a draw. half of the pay-per-view will go to whichever competitor. I think there will be like a space in the in where you're buying the pay-per-view and you'll have a competitor. Um, or maybe it's a drop-down box that you can choose from. So, Yeah, that's a yeah. really good match. Good match. Nakaya... Um, Gets the job done there, Dan, tactically. That Von Plu was close. Yeah, was it was, man. And you saw um, you saw the panic bump, mm -hmm. right? Just mm -hmm. like, oh, man, like, got to get Nakaya off uh, pressure and those carotids. There's a link for the pay-per-view on pgfhome.com. 
Well, we're about ready to move into the men's quintet portion. We go over First to up, the Team Ironclad during the men's team duel, TJ Steinbach. His opponent for Team Cantrell, Charles Muxo. We got Ch Charles versus TJ, and this is a must-win match for TJ. He needs a uh, kill. Has to have a kill. TJ's a guy, I'm sure he's not happy. He was coming in to make the top eight, and he still has a great chance today. He's a very good grappler. Part of Team USA, their winning team at the USA Grappling Games. Hmm. Yeah, TJ is a brown belt and the uh, the owner and head instructor of Gemini Fitness and Combat out of Inglewood, Colorado. He's in your top position now with the black rash guard. Chaz Muxo on bottom with the, the blue rash guard out of black tie, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu out of Cape Coral, Florida. Position from TJ's working on this arm triangle. He's, gonna, he's got some work to do. Trying to clear the butterfly hooks. But man, he's in a great position. If he can find, oh, he's getting deeper and deeper. If he can just move his, himself to the other side, if he can just move his body over there, he's really gonna, he's really gonna be able to finish this. Yeah, Chaz is very undersized for the season, but he's shown a lot of resiliency. He's, he's really putting the fight in every time. Oh, this is deep. You see Charles trying to get that hand up on the shoulder to pull it down. TJ's a little too high. He's trying to adjust backwards. He's trying to, he needs to push his weight back just a little bit. Mm. Starting to lose the arm. Nice adjustment by TJ. Thank you, Allie. You guys make sure and go share this link to all your social media accounts. Let's get, let's get some viewers in here. Oh, man, what an incredible movement by TJ. Just the windshield wipe. He's on the right side now. He's facing in. This actually hurts that Charles is the smallest guy because he's just, mm. it's got to be perfect. And you see right there. I mean, it was just beautiful technique by TJ. Nice job by Charles, though finding himself back in the butterfly guard. I mean, so if Chaz had, had a bigger neck and bigger shoulders, easier to lock that up, right? Yeah, it just leaves less spaces for you to have to compensate. Three minutes remaining. Yeah, three minutes, and TJ's got to be... You're going to be panicking a little bit, right? Like, he knows the situations he's in, uh, the situation he's in. He wants to make that tournament. We've seen from his attacks that he's trying to get a kill, but, I mean, with two minutes left, you just got to move on to the next match. Like, you got to get a break. At that two-minute mark, you got to be thinking about just how can I put any points on the board. Honestly, with the quintet format, I think you got to go, you got to be super opportunistic, whatever presents itself. I, I think we've seen, look, look at the rock troll. He's, he has one kill, but he just he just wants to get you out and move on. <laughs> oh, we've got an omoplata from TJ. Oh, it's straight up. Oh, nice, nice finish by TJ. All right, Team TJ, let's hear it in the chat. Andrew Winter by Armbar, TJ Steinbach. You want to catch your breath and come talk to me for a second? Cool, man. We'll give it real quick, real quick. Man, big win for you right here. First match of the day. What you got coming up? Next one. 
But more arm bars? More arm bars, yeah. I'm good at that. Oh, good. Your coach said that today you're going to come out here, get some points, push yourself in playoff contention. Now's your chance, man. Good job. So now he's, uh, he's now with, at five points. That takes him up uh, to the 13th, 13th position. So, you know, you string a couple more together and, and you're possibly in contention. I mean, that, that's just what I'm talking about, opportunistic, because you need, you need to string multiple ones together if you're coming down from the bottom. Yeah. And I'm sure he's hoping... Do not send out Samson. <laughs> All right, next competitor is about to be announced. And his opponent from Team Cantrell will be Matthew Boyles. Oh, yeah. Nice. Low country. Winnable match for both guys. Um, TJ, obviously, a little compromised. Took about four and a half minutes to finish um, his first opponent, but now he's getting to face him. Matthew Boyles, the ball of energy. Matthew started off really hot, mm -hmm. but yesterday wasn't his day. He needs to stay on the outside. His cardio and his, his energy is, is, is he's weaponizing it like Caleb McAllister does. Um, but, but yesterday, Nick Soff was able to kind of like bring him in, keep the connection, and keep him from being that ball of energy. So I don't know. I know, I know that Matthew Boyles go, likes to come straight at you. I don't know how he does that while keeping the ball energy not getting, you know, locked up. Yeah, and when I say that, Matthew looked really good yesterday. That match against Dane Leak was incredible. Um, one of my favorite matches of the day yesterday. Um, but Matthew, the first time, right, last season, he was here to, like, partake. Yeah. This season, like, he's here as a player. But, oh, oh he's got this knee bar. He loves knee bars. We oh. saw him hit at least two of those in the Decatur, uh, Decatur qualifier. TJ Slick, man. <laughs> Trying to force Matthew uh, into the 50-50 position. Matthew, though, his knee line is clear, so we're going to need to see TJ do some climbing to recapture that knee line. Wait, Muxo's 125? That's what it, they're if, saying in the chat. Is he that big? <laughs> Was that kind of like Dane Leak being 5'3"? No, I think no. he weighed in at like 128 <laughs> with like all of his clothes, maybe a hoodie and some jeans on. on and stuff. Dude, what a stud. <laughs> Thank It was really low. I mean, that's fair. If Dane Leak is 5'4", then, you know, Muxo's probably like 5' flat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. It's like he comes out here, and it's a great story because, you know, it's like they say, it's the, si it's the size of the fight and the dog, right? You know? And he's really shown a, a fighting spirit. We might see TJ fading here a little bit. Second match, Matthew Boyles. And, and TJ was leading the dance for the first couple of minutes, but now we're starting to see Matthew Boyles um, you know, get into this knee slice position. His knee slicing has looked incredible all week. Both sides. I mean, he can pass very well to both sides. And, and that's a skill that I wish more grapplers had. I wish they were just competent, like really, really competent at passing to both sides. Because it's, it's so important, especially as we see the guard games develop um, in, in the modern jiu-jitsu, in modern jiu-jitsu, I should say. Just under three minutes remain. Looks like TJ recaptured that leg. TJ doing a great job not allowing Matthew to get his foot free. Really keeping a lock on that foot. Okay. Nice yeah, nice little deep half counter. He's got the scoop grip, but he sees TJ on top. He's still got some work to do, though. He's got to be careful. Matthew's got a nice scoop grip uh, on that right arm. He's going to try and force a triangle, and that's one of Matthew Boyle's best positions. We saw him finish Dane Leak. It was a, a, a shoulder lock from inside a triangle, but that's where he's been most dangerous this week. Just forcing that arm in, uh, either one arm in, one arm out scenario. And now, though, TJ's in on a leg. He doesn't have the knee line, though. Two minutes remain. And 
And that's such a big improvement we saw from Boyles from season three to now. Uh, his ability to, to attack with the legs and to escape the leg attacks. I'd say like the teams are more in, uh, in it today. I think they've all kind of bonded and they've got to know each other. And they also realize how important, uh, important today is. Again, for everybody besides Dane Lee. Dane Lee's already in, everybody else is, who knows. But TJ's in on this inside heel hook. Oh, he, he got it, finish. TJ. Huge win for TJ. Ooh. TJ making a statement in this men's first round of the quintet. That's two for two for TJ Steinbach with another break. So just put six points on the board. Can I catch your breath this time? Come on, let's tell him what's up. What's up, guys? Thank you for supporting your local cult leader. <laughs> <laughs> and, and just like that, he's now tied for 11th. Man. Okay. Moving okay. up the ranks. TJ's got great entries. He was, he's was he been getting a uh, knee slip, right? Guys have been slipping their knees out all week. He finally, though, secures the knee line of Matthew Boyles. Finishes with kind of like a heel hook knee bar. Mm -hmm. Like one of those where it's kind of Paul Horacy with the legs straight and it's just a heel hook knee bar. I like that. Paul Horacy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Except he let go. <laughs> Which we appreciate. Dude, I know the people back home are going crazy for TJ. Oh, you yeah. see, they're all, yeah, they're all in here. We got uh, DJ, DJ. Andreas Apostol, Brady Newrick, all about TJ. All the next competitors about to be announced. Okay, next up for Team Cantrell will be Juan Martinez. Oh, yes. Team Ironclad has chosen to sit TJ Steinbach. Next up for them will be Wesley Carter. I mean, what do you think? Uh, they decided to sit him down. You think he just couldn't go, or? Uh, I think he was tired. Yeah. I mean, you just went with Matthew Boyles. You know. <laughs> Might need a breather. Well, and a scrappy uh, Charles Muxo, too, you exactly. know? Exactly. 125 pounds. Yeah. He went hard after row. that arm triangle, too. Just you think about that Charles Muxo. He had that mm -hmm. arm triangle for, like, a minute and a half, and you know he was squeezing. He wanted those yeah. six points. So. One of my favorite guys this week, right here, we got Juan Martinez. Juan has been incredible. Yeah. The clock. And Juan Martinez in the black and red clock. rash guard, Wesley Carter in the white rash guard. The clock. Uh, Juan Martinez is currently, he's, he's the man on the bubble. He is tied with Reese Lefebvre for eighth position. Well, and he just sees his teammate TJ rack up six points, so he's got to put a little fire in his butt to... Hey, I need to go score, man. People are going to be scoring today. Some guys, I mean, they've got injuries. you got to wonder how compromised some of these people are, too. It's injuries you don't even know about. Ribs, back, popped feet. You know, like. Oh, yeah, our, our paramedic has been the most uh, popular guy around here <laughs> the last couple of days. It was like the commission, uh, you know, he, he channeled James Kahn from the program. Are you hurt or are you injured? All well, these guys are hurt, but they're still out there. Oh. oh, yeah, the ref never said stop. So you see Wesley Carter, he stops expecting to be reset in the middle yeah. of the match. They're still on the edge. Yeah, that could have been a big mistake. But Wesley's got his knee free. Man, whoever won Martinez, oh, okay. Whoever won Martinez's girlfriend, is, she did a great job drilling these leg locks with him. <laughs> Oh, is that who he's drilling with? Yeah, that's what it is. That's how it came out. So he came from uh, Childress, Childress BJJ in Pueblo, Colorado, uh, and, and it was a, a traditional school. But, you know, he wanted to get in the leg lock game. So, you know, uh, Juan and his girlfriend were drilling an hour plus after everyone, you know, was doing other things. And so for a long time, so he became really good at leg locks. And he then started teaching everyone else leg locks at the school. That's a good that's awesome. formula. Mm -hmm. You drill, have a consistent drilling partner, learn the material, and then start teaching it. And you'll find that you can add pretty much anything. Even if you don't have, you just need a Donahue DVD, I guess a girlfriend, a good <laughs> girlfriend, that's willing to drill with you, and then some students that you can show uh, show the material to. And he's, he's looked great, man. He had that, uh, that jumping triangle choke he attempted yesterday oh, yeah. was, was going to be, was oh, gonna be oh. the finish of the tournament. Uh-oh, Juan's got his back. Trying to use those crab hooks. Good work by Wesley. Wesley's, uh, he reminds me a lot of Jacob Mashburn. Yeah. Scrappy, aware, you know, he's very aware. 
of attacks. Oh, nice entry by Juan, trying to get into the honey hole. Oh, that was an excellent switch. Excellent switch, turning that into an outside heel hook, but now Wesley Carter, pass looking for a Dars. Yeah. So he's hit two and a half minutes. Mm -hmm. It's been non-stop action. Wesley Carter is one of the guys, like on your final day, you don't want to see him. He's very, very tough to finish. Him and Jacob Mashburn, it's going to be tough to get points. Like, if you need points, those are going to be two tough guys to get them from. <laughs> and the Colt is still calling out for TJ. We'll see him again today. Two minutes. And Wesley Carter out of uh, Queen City Grappling, uh, longtime training partner of Evan. Oh, uh, he's got an outside heel hook, oh and he gets God, the man. top. Juan Martinez with a huge, huge, huge break to earn three points, and he's moving up the leaderboard. Big win for Juan Martinez against a tough Wesley Carter. You're winning by submission, Juan Martinez. Can you come out here to the winner's circle? breath for a second. You good? Yeah. That seemed like a pretty tough match there. How do you think? Yeah, it was a pretty tough match. He's a, he's really good. Never seen much about him, but he's he's awesome. So. It looked like you jumped on your head there one time and you scrambled out. You got some pretty good like defense to battle out into leg locks. Is that usually what you do? Yeah, I've been working on that. People tend to have a harder time to attack my legs now than before. So. Well, you're looking sharp, dude. Good, good job. All right, and with that, Juan Martinez is now solidly in control of that eighth uh, position. So he, right at, if we stop right now, he is in the finale. Okay. So let's, let's, see, let's see if he can rack up some more points so he gets a little bit of buffer so he's not in that bubble. He, he needs another finish because he is eighth, but we know there's going to be a lot of movement on the leaderboard. And he's one point back from Evan DeWitt and David Garcia. So another win here, man. He, he moves himself up out of that danger spot. You don't want to be the eighth guy. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to be sweating all day. All right, we have the next competitor about to be announced. Next up for Team Ironclad will be David Garcia. Ooh. Here's a tall order. Now, David Garcia put up zero points yesterday. I mean, he got one, one team point for being on, on Ironclad. But uh, highly, no one would have expected that. Yeah, he was... Um, one of the best competitors in day one. It looked like he just kind of coasted through yesterday. Mm. Um, we didn't see a lot of urgency from, it's kind of like he let his teammate star. We saw Alex Hall go out there. He was always the, um, the back man, right? Yeah. He was always yeah. the, the sixth person. And you want to be one of the first couple, just to give yourself opportunities to have multiple matches. And we saw that with Samson and Alex Hall. Like, Well, if Alex Hall was the sixth man, he got the sixth man award yesterday. <laughs> got to be very careful with David Garcia's um, just exposing your back. First day, finished two beautiful rear naked chokes. And if I had to guess, he's thinking like, man, I need, I need one, or two, one or two kills today. And I, I, think, I think that should be enough. Because a kill here puts him at 20, and I think mm -hmm. 20 is going to be good. Oh, yeah. I think 20 gets you in for sure. Nice pass. Keeping up with Jones, the Lonnie Jones podcast adventure. Check him out on Apple Podcasts. Yeah, the homie Jay's right. Juan's number eight on the board, but he's still number five of the Juans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, nice. oh, 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 oh. What a battle. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh. You're so oh. Nice. <laughs> 
What a scramble. Oh, yeah. Back in it. Oh, oh he gets yeah. it. Oh. <laughs> wow. Wow. That was insane. Andrew, winner by submission, David Garcia. David? What's up, man? Step on down. Final day of the season. Uh, you're in playoff contention. I'm not sure exactly how many points you got to get. Do you think you're going to put yourself up there in the top tier today? Oh, for sure. I know I have time to rack up some points. Make sure I'm in it for tomorrow. And come out with the ball. Man, we look forward to seeing more from you today. Great job. That was beautiful. That was insanity. He, he escaped, it. and he was just back, back right on it. He escaped multiple times. <laughs> and he just kept, like a dog on a bone, just kept going after him. Nice. But with those three points, David Garcia now moves up to third place. Wow. That's the kind of action you got to see from these guys today. Got to get some points on the board. Now we're going to find out his next opponent. Team Cantrell has chosen to send out Anthony Molina Valdez. This is a rematch from yesterday. We saw this, uh, this match went to a draw, but Anthony needs points right now. I think David, David's looking really good and at that third spot, he's gonna have uh, more matches um, in, the, in the next quintet. But Anthony, he, he needs points, man. And I wonder if he asked for this match, because I know the coaches are, like Kamoy, for instance, is asking his competitors, hey, is there anybody you want to match up against? So I wonder if Anthony's just want to run, like if he wants to run this back. Kind of a pride issue now. I mean, they're both the first picked men in the draft for their respective teams. And so, you know, who's the best anchor? Kiai says someone check his shoulder. His right arm is his best one. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it, Kiai. <laughs> oh, what a great attack by Anthony, man. Anthony's had some great leg attacks. We saw it right there with that outside heel hook. And then that first match against Reese LeFever, he had Reese in some really deep trouble. Reese was uh, was written through a couple of those heel hook attempts. And, uh, man, he, David had to scramble right there. I mean, he has such smooth, beautiful jiu-jitsu, and he, he's not afraid to pull the trigger at any point. Yeah, and I hate to say this, he could be this season's Dane Leak, of just a guy that's looked really good, right? But yeah. just didn't score, didn't get the points to get. and Because he was one of the, my, like, my five favorites mm -hmm. um, coming into this thing. And we've seen him, and he's slick. He's put a lot of these dudes in a lot of danger. He's just, just not getting the taps. Well, we, we saw Anthony Molina, obviously, with the, the – on bottom now with, with the longer hair, 10th uh, planet I mean, at the Fort Myers qualifier. He's out of 10th planet in Miami, but he was a buzzsaw. I mean, it, it, like, like he might have been on the mats total of six minutes against everyone, just just taking limbs home. Uh, but, but as you said, he just hasn't been able to get that same success here. Uh, whereas we've seen David Garcia has this very much, you know, pressure, you know, dog on that bone mentality, and he's got had some success, but it also leads to him tiring out. So, yeah. man, look at how he clears the head. He's very flexible. Eddie Bravo would love Anthony Molina, but because he's not creating an angle, he's using his flexibility a little too much. We saw that yesterday, and we just saw it right there. David's able to square back up and just slip his arm out. So he does need a little bit better knee pinch. He can't just rely on that flexibility. As you said yesterday, David Garcia come, coming out of 10th planet Lombard. So he knows the 10th planet game. And he's one of the best guys. Like, a lot of people don't know who David Garcia is, but it's one of those, like, if you know, you know. He's one of the most talented dudes in the system. He's a guy I expect in the next couple of years to really blow up and even maybe make oh. a, like, trials, um, like a trials run, ADCC trials run. He's got, a, he's got a really good game for ADCC. Competent on the feet, an incredible passer, very tough to sweep, and good back game. That's a recipe for ADCC success. Mm -hmm. This has been a very even match. We saw it yesterday when these two um, competed against each other. It went to a draw. And outside of um, Anthony's heel hook attack, we haven't seen either guy really be able to um, 
to get anything close. Womp, womp, womp. New member to Karen Leak. Welcome to Homie. I, I thinking and like talking about David Garcia. If he does make it into the uh, the eight man playoff, which I think he will, I think he's going to be the favorite. He's got a win over Frank Rosenthal. His bat game is incredible. He's a tenth planet practitioner, so he's done tons and tons and tons of EBI overtimes. Like I know he's done uh, a lot of like EBI rule set tournaments. He's going to be a handful. So I'm sure a lot of the competitors are hoping that. David somehow finds himself <laughs> on the uh, other side of uh, the, the eight man. I mean, I hear you, but I still got to think Dane Leak's the, the favorite to win it in my book. But I'm compromised according to Wallow J. That's hard to argue right now. Dane's been a buzzsaw. Him and uh, Maximus. Oh, yeah. So talk about the, uh, the difference in the rule sets from what we're watching now to the finale. So it's the finale is going to be EBI rules? Yes. It will be a 10-minute EBI rule match. Um, and, and what about the championship match? Do I we know yet? Have it, has a decision been made? I'm sure it has been. Do you know if the, the finals is going to be no time limit? No, it, it's all going to be EBI, uh, straight okay. EBI rules. Dang, Katie just throwing out some names right yeah, there. Yeah, name dropping. Frank Rosenthal, J.M. Holland, and Anthony Burchek. My bad. Okay, uh, guys, don't adjust your mic so much. And even this cord that's hanging down from the mic, it picks up sound. So stop moving. That's what they're saying. Uh, don't touch anything and don't move. <laughs> See how silent we can be? All right, 30 seconds left. Have I pink I didn't know I pink -licked. Twelve seconds. Ten. Yeah, this match is going to another draw. Man, what a battle. What a battle. This match is a draw. Oh, Egg, are you a fidgeter? Do you fidget? Man, that's just mean spirited, guys. Come on. All right. Okay, I, I, I've taken a clicky pen away from myself. I have a regular standard pen. I cannot click this thing. Any clicks will not be me from now on. Y all, y all. No, I really think it, somebody, if you even touch like your headphones, that makes like the noise in the mic. Touching these cords that come down from the headphones makes noise in the mic, and they can hear everything. So. Okay. We gotta try to be still. That's hard for me, too. I want to bounce my legs so bad. <laughs> oh, okay, for our next matchup from Team Ironclad, we're going to have Nick Saff. And for Team Cantrell, Noah Randolph. Ooh. Nick B. Noah. <laughs> yeah, see, I, I, just, I know to just keep my hands on my lap. Right. And I just sit here still and enjoy the matches. Oh. Man, Nick's already oh. in. Oh, wow. He gets a quick time. Uh, no, already not Andrew, what about submission? It. Getting the extra point, Nick Sass. So that's four. All right. Nick Sath <laughs> is he's the blue belt uh, of this year. You walked away from me, so I didn't know if you wanted to talk. I just say hey to my teammates. Okay, come say hey to me first, though, baby. If you want to get the mic, you got to come talk <laughs> to who's got the mic. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That was a beautiful job. Yeah, hoping to get Samson back. Oh, oh. you gonna put it in his hand? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go. Name and names. Well, we know who it is. You know who it is. It's Samson. Fum about. He, he's coming. He had to go fight a bear real quick just to get warmed up. <laughs> yeah, this has been a tough, uh, tough tournament for Noah. We see him limping up there. Like mm -hmm. I've seen him limping. I think after every. Oh. Match. 
Yeah, I was going to, didn't he uh, kind of popped yesterday too? Yep, he did. So I, the points are flying. With right those now. four points, that now takes Nick Soft up to 12 points, and he's at the ninth position, uh, meaning the Reese with 10 points is now at the 10th position. He's outside looking in. Oh, you see an aggressive attack from Samson Fungabout. Oh, he's trying to lock this Darce up. Oh, he's got that. Oh, oh my gosh. Seven points. Seven points. With a run in from the back for seven points, Samson Fungabout. So now he moves into second place with 23 points. <laughs> People are not here to play today. They, the sense of urgency is, is, has been taken up to 11. Yeah. First day, there's some nerves. Don't really know much about, you know, some of these guys are really hard to research. You see mm -hmm. a qualifier, but that doesn't tell you everything. But also getting into the, in, into the groove of the six-minute urgency, because a lot of these guys are used to 10-minute matches out there in competitions. Um, and so they get to ramp it up, and now, oh, got the next competitor about to be announced. Next up for Team Ironclad, we're going to have Evan DeWitt. Ooh. Evan DeWitt had maybe the best sub of the week yesterday with that guillotine. He rolled with the chin strap, turned it into a north-south mm -hmm. choke. Uh, disgusting on Manning Levert, like a stud too. So anytime you hit a highlight and then you hit a highlight on a stud, yeah. That, that 3X is the, the quality, right? <laughs> and he's got a tough match right here, though, against Sampson. Sampson took about 30 seconds. Took about 30 seconds to finish Nick with that Darsh choke. So, <sighs> got to think, Sampson, from what we've seen and what I know, because I've worked out with the man, his mm. conditioning is second to none. But this week uh, has been a big, big confidence boost, I know, for Evan DeWitt. Last season, Went as bad as it could go. Mm -hmm. Got drafted last. Gets injured in the first match. So he can't even go out and, like, show the people they were wrong. Right. And he's really come in this season and uh, been one of the best guys. Absolutely. Five minutes. Oh, Samson looking for another Dars. Evan does a good job, though, getting that left arm outside of the hip. So he's going to be safe, at least for now, from that Dars. Nice work by Evan DeWitt. Oh, what an injury. Oh. oh, he's got it right there. Oh, he's trying to switch. He's trying to switch to a straight ankle. We call this a shooto grip, where you use the opposite arm. Samson just basing on his head all in the hardwood. <laughs> like, I don't care. Well, you, you heard Samson ask him. He said, hey, are you okay? So I wonder if he maybe heard a little crackle in there. Oh, mm. well, Evan's ex experienced black belt. I'm, I'm sure there's all kinds of crackles everywhere. Oh. Yeah, I think Evan, you know, even in the qualifier, right? Didn't he, he I think he let a pop happen. Yeah, he um, did. He yeah, did. Louisville. In the Louisville qualifier. You're right, Lindsay. So he's just used to letting, letting stuff go. <laughs> he's super tough. I mean, yeah. so that, that Manning versus Evan match was my favorite of the last night. Oh. Oh. Both hands are in. Samson, a little flying guard action here. I think both hands are in, so not quite a flying triangle, but he's looking to switch now to an arm bar. <laughs> smiling at the camera. <laughs> oh, and now we've got Evan in on a leg lock. Samson, though, clears the knee line. Very calm.
So Evans out of Derby City MMA with uh, Chu Jiu Jitsu as his coach. Uh, he actually helped uh, Chewy draft this team that now Matt Elkins has taken over and uh, been pretty dominant. He did his research, did very well. Both uh, Evan and Chewy picked a, a phenomenal team. You see Sampson go for a rolling toe hold attempt and now he's going in on an outside attack on the left leg. He's trying to get this straight ankle lock. And now you see Evan trying to counterattack. And we saw with uh, Samson in his match against Reese, like he was he was eating some heel hooks, and I mean he was he was fine, right? He just walked right up the mat. We've seen a bunch of dudes limping, and Samson, he was just sprinting. He was sprinting to go get that rash guard. So we know his legs are fine. Some discussions he's had about the workouts he's done. I don't know if he's human. <laughs> <laughs> he's a beast for sure. We see the Jackie Chan entry attempt by uh, Evan DeWitt. Forces Samson on the back heel. This has been a great match. Man, today is today's about to be insane. strength of Samson right there. Finds himself in the mount position. He's got a minute and 10 seconds to work. He's trying to grind on the face. You trying to smother him? He's just trying to create a reaction. He wants Evan to open up. What's underneath that elbow? You guys in the chat, uh, yeah, Kamish, come on and tell us, you know, what, about the super fights and that kind of thing on Saturday. So I, I'm not really 100% sure what he's doing with that situation. I know he said a lot of the competitors want to fight again on Saturday, but never heard a final word. Rules meeting. 20 seconds. Fifteen. Oh, oh wow. gosh. <laughs> Just, no regard for his body. There's no way that felt good. Uh-uh. Oh, man. Evan's going to end in it. trying to go for that AOT lock on Samson, but Samson's a wild man. <laughs> Excellent match by both guys. Um, really, really good work right this there. This match finishes with a draw. Yeah, Samson is solidly in the playoffs. Again, moving into second place there with, with uh, 23 points. Uh, Evan DeWitt, he's, he's going to have some work to do next time he comes up because he's at 14 points. That, that's now at the bubble zone. Uh, he's in there, uh, but a, a couple of finishes by, by some folks, and, and he's going to be out, um, outside looking in. Okay, so th we are doing, we're about to do two ladies matches, and that'll end this um, block of quintet matches, and then we're going to have three more blocks of quintet matches. All right, now we're going to he hear the next announcement. Next up are the ladies from Team Cantrell, Emily Cyanide Hauser versus Team Ironclads, Nakia Jackson. I can't believe we just got through that first team thing. It went so <laughs> that fast. That fast? Yeah, there's just a lot more submissions, insane action. Um, we still have three more, three more quintets people that we're going to be running. So you guys stick around. They've been these things have been running what five hours? So we've been giving you five uh, hours yeah. of action each day. Free content here on Brandon's YouTube channel. Tomorrow uh, we'll be airing at noon central but it'll be a pay-per-view. That link is on pgfhome.com. PJ Broom, uh, I'm going to say what I heard at the, the rules meeting. Uh, I heard $300 in the Super Chat uh, would pretty much get you that uh, super fight in the finale. So, so PJ, if you, you, you guys in Scramble can get $300 on that Super Chat for that fight, well, we might just see it happen. Yeah, and that makes sense because, uh, I mean... We've we got have to pay people to sit up here with us <laughs> and run the show. And the facilities. <laughs> right. We've got to pay the facility extra time being here. Um, I mean, you know, the commission isn't trying to make extra money. He's just trying to help defray the cost a little bit for the added expenses. Yeah. 
So, oh man, I see Elijah Carlton. Truly not impressed. I'd wash this whole roster. <laughs> well, if you make 155, you could be out here doing it. <sighs> he can make 155. I, he has in the past. I don't know about. I don't know about this Elijah. He's a little thicker these days. But I've seen Elijah do some work at 155. But I don't know. He would know. be so skinny. Yeah, he's like 6'3". Oh, three. Man, he would be so skinny. Yeah. Uh, ooh. I don't think he'd be healthy. No. He'd look like a skeleton. He'd look like Kevin Primo and, and Randy Roden from <laughs> oh, way yeah. in last season. Poor Kevin. <laughs> and Randy. Yeah. All right, so we got Nakai in the closed guard again. Ooh, I like that name, the casual Carlos. That's good. Cool. <laughs> kind of trying to set up a guillotine in the close guard. I don't know if that's the best strategy. Like, this is a pretty big, I mean, it's not, in, like, huge. For, like, Nakai doesn't have to win this match. He's nine points up. But a win here would almost seal uh, her being this season's champion. Pretty much. <laughs> Kevin Cheryl says, y'all hear Elijah? He'd absolutely wash these women. Come on, Lindsay. That's handsome, Kevin Cheryl. Go, 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 the handsome title. Sorry, Kev, Kevin. You need to change your username to Handsome Kevin instead of your actual name. <laughs> yeah, we've got. I got the casual Carlos. <laughs> you need to be Handsome Kevin. There's nothing more boring than the closed guard. <laughs> I would probably agree. That's the thing. We haven't seen any closed guard work from the guys. And no. really, we've just seen close guard in the women's matches against Nakaya. <laughs> what, what would do well, Matthew? What would Matthew Boyles do if he was stuck in close guard? <laughs> well, he he'd bring that knee in the middle and 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 the and boys down past. This line. I mean, he's he's done that. I mean, it's, it's freaky how flexible he is getting that knee in there. Nice guard break. Nakaya's got two minutes and forty seconds to work. Joani's very invested in this match because she knows she's like, man, if Nakai finishes Emily, I don't really have a chance. Yeah. Hey, talking about the close guard, I mean, jo Joani had some good close guard work, or at least was active. Yo, no, no, 100%. You know. uh, Joani, yes. But, but that's it, the exception. It, it's the body triangle and then not moving your hips and just kind of holding on. That That's not fun to watch. And I'm always looking because obviously I'm Nakaya's coach, but when I'm in this role, I'm thinking of, oh, she's got this. Nice. Yeah. And you can see, I mean, immediately when the close guard's not in play, Nakaya's just tearing through people. So I, I totally get it, but I'm thinking again as a fan. And your winner by submission, Nakaya Jackson. Hokage. Let's go, Hokage. So... You, you told me yesterday that it means on duty, but it means the supreme leader who's on duty. So that means you're the boss, right? I'm the boss, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, the Hokage is all about uh, leading with the will of fire. That's the thing that keeps him strong and ready to go into battle. All about compassion, peace, and protecting the village, protecting this community, so, yeah. All right, that was up. Great job, we'll see you again later on today. Hokage on duty. Oh, okay, with that, Nakaya goes to 33 points. Uh, Joani's still at 18. Now, uh, Joani's going to face, would have faced Brianna later on. That's a forfeit, so she's going to get two points for there. That means she still has to get 13 points. That means Joani needs a kill and a kill within one minute in her next two competitive, uh, competitive matches. But we're ready to hear the next Next match. up from Team Cantrell, Joani Chamberlain. And from Team Ironclad, Kata Davis. I, I'm really interested in this match because this match is huge for Jelani, but I know Kata was, like, she was really disappointed uh, with how this match went yesterday. So I think we're going to see a very um, energized Kata Davis. And she pulls guard because she was, she was saying that she just didn't know how to approach Jelani. Yeah, but Jelani has to be energized. As we said, she needs both a kill and a kill within one minute. So she's got to be going like, for the super fast kill both times. Elijah says, uh, me versus Kaya, super fight. <laughs> I, 
I'm a huge fan of the bad guy. But that smoke he does not want. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Ooh. No, I, it, it really, um, you know, some people like new faces. I want to see, uh, see Elijah in every season. <laughs> every season. I don't care who's here. Yeah, we're thinking about getting him a wig if this is going to be a female-only season. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so a minute's about to pass. Nice inversion by Kata. And there we go. So right now, we know that Joani needs a kill in this match, and in her next, next match, she will have to get a kill within one minute uh, to tie the Kaya well, Jackson. She has uh, Brianna. So that's yeah, with, that's we'll with have it. to go Claire. Yes. But yeah, even with um, even with Claire, like Claire hasn't given up points all week. Claire's willing to die out there. I know Claire's main mission. I haven't talked to her or anything, but you just know her main mission is to go, hey, guys, I, none of me. you sub me. So she is going to let herself break, I think, to not get submitted today just so she, she can be right. just so she can be like, hey, like none of you submitted me. None of you brown and black belt submitted me. Mm -hmm. I belong, you know. All right. Kata's looking to pass. She's got to be careful here. She's going to get her back taken. And this no. is what we saw yesterday. Just overcommitted. Wait too far forward. Now, body triangle here for jo uh, Joani. And she, this is how she finished her yesterday. And she's got almost four minutes to work from this position. <laughs> Elijah says there's no common enemy with a target on their head. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of been Dane Leak, but it, I don't know why, and it hasn't been as fun. No, yeah, and, and Dane's such a nice guy. <laughs> yeah, he talks smack on him. He's like, okay. He's like, mm -hmm. we'll yeah. see. Yeah, all these guys hate Dane Leak for some reason. And we talk about, I don't, I don't know if they hate him, but they, they, they know he's a name to call out. You know, the, the rock roll, like we said yesterday, the rock roll, like no kidding, was ask, asking his coach, to find him some rubber leaks so he can just like chew on them, you know, for, for a promo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got three minutes remaining. And John again, is two fifth minutes and 50 seconds to work. Again, this, this is a must kill. She can't switch off. Uh, to an arm bar, any type of lock, if, if she wants to have a chance at winning the season. Shoptoehold.com for your leather flip flops and also leather bags. Check them out, shoptoehold.com. Yeah, you see Kata here. She's just she's resorting to just pure defense. Um, got the arms in that prayer position here. It's so tough to get under the neck when you've got an opponent just sticking those hands up there, right? Just sticking the hands up. Blocking any path to the you know, naked choke. Um, it's it's going to be tough to finish Kata in, in the next two minutes. That's what I'm saying. I think some of the girls are, like, we're going to see that with Claire. Especially, like, Claire's going to double down on, like, yeah, she's going to go for wins, but she for sure wants to keep that perfect mm -hmm. record when it comes to I did not get tapped. Oh, but, yeah. Just hearing her talk on the microphone yesterday, that's exactly what she wants. <laughs> well, you had, I think you got two things here. You got one, you got, oh, oh, I think she's got underneath the chin. She's trying to rotate. Johnny trying to do a high elbow. Still got a minute and a half. Yeah, she doesn't have it. She doesn't have the choking arm deep enough, I don't think. Okay, this is getting deeper. They've moved off. You see Kata, though, not really struggling, but that hand, see, Joanne just doesn't have the best gripping. She's not going to be able to really, and you see she's, like, yeah. Tough. Oh, man, Ooh, man such left. a good attack right there, but just. <laughs> 50 seconds. So you, so you have both one. Kata's, Kata's pride, but you know how much has Kata become a real teammate of Nakaya right now during this season? Maybe she's blocking Joanne for No time, no time to fix your hair. <laughs> Come on. 
clock is still running. We've got 30 seconds. <laughs> While she fixes her hair, Juwani's going to put her back in the R and C. Hey, it's just like tying a belt in the geese. we got 20 seconds. Yeah, I mean, she lost like 40 seconds right there. In the reset. Mm -hmm. So I totally get the frustration, you know, from yeah. her team and her coach, you know, like, I, that's tough. And now, I mean, she's got no chance. Yeah. Yeah, that's tough. And with that, Nikaya mathematically is the winner. Yeah. And this match finishes with a draw. Tough. Okay, so we go on to our second block of matches. Or no, sorry, this is the end of the first block of matches. The end of the first duel in block five. So now we're going to get our second duel in block five. Uh, of course, block six coming up with another two duels. Yeah. Well, we're so. at the here who won the team in just a few minutes. Now we're ready. And your winner is Team Ironclad, 22 to 10. I saw an interview with Matt Elkins. I went, we went back and watched the PGF last night. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, Chewy didn't make it, but I really appreciate his picks. <laughs> yeah. It's about to make him $500 richer. Exactly. I mean, he's firmly in control of that $500. Well, I, you know, much respect to Chewy. did a lot of research. But again, I, you know, got to give a little credit to Evan DeWitt in there. Obviously, a PGF Season 3 veteran. Uh, knows a lot of these folks. And I, I think, you know, when... When Chu was talking about it during the draft, he put together a team that would gel. That you know, they they knew the quintet would be tough. You know, they he got people he knew, but also people that like I think would support and feed off each other. Mm. Uh, and it, other man, teams it's be staging up next matchup. Please be staging up. All right. So well, we've got um, coming up next should have been Anna and Brianna. Yeah, unfortunately, Brianna, um, as we said, she's injured. So everyone that was scheduled to face her will get two points for the forfeit. Yeah, um, and here's the thing about that last one, like, uh, um, we've been doing a running clock the whole time, right? So mm -hmm. anytime competitors go off the match, it's a running clock. And, I mean, Joanne had, she was on the back for three minutes. It wasn't like she just got it and, like, you know, she almost finished right there. They rolled out, but we've been doing a running clock the whole time. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, that sucks. She lost 30 seconds there, but mm -hmm. I think after she lost the arm underneath the neck. You I think I she lost it anyway. Yeah. Yeah, probably. All right, we got the commish with us. How's everybody doing today? We feeling good? Okay, listen, here's what I need. Uh, there's been a lot of requests for super fights on the main card tomorrow on the pay-per-view. want to additional matches you want to see some of the athletes want to get back out there again because they're genuinely crazy uh and i didn't get that's my favorite kind of person you know so what i need if you want that to happen if you can get a match up to at least five hundred dollars if you can get a match to at least $500 collectively between everybody in the chat. So he's talking about donations from the Super from Chat. From the Super Chat, that's equaling right. Equaling $500 for the same match. For the, Per match, that's right. Because here's, i got to rent the facility longer if I start adding matches. Right. So, and I'm not going to ask the athletes to do it again without paying them. I know they would because they're all crazy. I want them to be paid for Compensated. their... Compensated. Yeah, I want it to be the Professional Grappling Federation, not the... Yeah, let's put a match together in the backyard federation. Right. Even though Street Beefs was in the chat. Even though yesterday. I actually prefer Street Beefs <laughs> over the UFC. Street Beefs was here. Um, Street Beefs was so on the chat yesterday? Supernatural Beef first. Yeah. That, so. That's the happiest I've ever <laughs> felt in my heart in probably he ever. Said, he probably said ever. The, he said the show was awesome. Well, he's right. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Street Beefs. And so what you're saying, though, is that it could be 250, like two parties coming together. So let's say like Matthew Boyles versus TJ Steinbeck. Yeah, if they can like, get 250, 250, yeah, we'll do it. Or maybe just 
TJ's people go, hey, we'll throw together 500. We want him. What did they go? We want him to face Matthew Boyles. Can they, like, the it, people well, say who they I mean, want the, him to see? I mean, the guys have to agree to the match, right? Okay. And so if you're, and also if you're like, oh, I want to see him versus Gordon Ryan, dude, Gordon, even if we raised $50,000, Gordon Ryan can't get here tomorrow. Okay, you know but I'm I mean? also. So it needs, to be, it needs to be people that are here so we can see these PGF athletes again. He'd be here for 50 Gs. So. I'm also probably going to get the question, well, what if I make the donation and the match doesn't happen? Then you're just making a donation to the PGF. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, I just wanted so to make sure. If you've got, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, because I can't, I can't refund Super Chat money. It could just go to the competitors if you go, hey, I really yeah, I could break it. See. Yeah, that's right. I'll break it out and split it evenly. Between the two. But uh, I'll break it back out into the other made matches. Well, I'm the saying if they were like, I want to see Matthew occur. Boyles, couldn't it just be a $50 donation to Matthew Boyles? Yeah, we could do it that way. But I, it, but no match unless there's 500 collectively between the two athletes somehow. Okay. So you guys help me out here and be super detailed with what you want. I'm going to be writing it down. <laughs> but I'll, you gotta you got to tell me what you want no, and who it, you want to see. Got, it's got to be 500 bucks to the winner of the match. Okay. 500 to the winner of the match. We need to get okay. 500 so I can give $500 to the winner. Okay. Well, but you won't get 500 to the winner because we're paying for rent. rent well, and Super Chat. But they'll get, they'll get all of the money that I don't have to um, give to YouTube. And the people that are running yeah, the Yeah, I, I already took care board. of that. Oh, okay. okay. I'm going I'm to take care of that some other way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how yet. I might have to come in here and take communion or something. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. All right. Guys, I got to run. We're ready to get back to the show. I love you guys. Thank you so much. This is really important to me, and it means a lot to me that you're watching. And we're ready for our next match of the day to see who's going to make it to the playoffs tomorrow only on pgfhome.com. First up, Team Supernatural Survival Gear. Their coach, Caleb McAllister. <laughs> People want to see us arm wrestle. Athletes. Dane Leak, Anna Kanaj, Mario Gayor, Billy Baxter, Jacob Arp, Jacob Mashburn, Nathan, the Irish Taco Chambers, and Tara La Rosa. Oh, oh. That's true, Elijah. There'll never be another so bad guy problems. like you. You're the true bad guy. <laughs> and their opponents, representing teams such as such, coached by Sean Applegate. <laughs> Athletes Brianna Parocha, Manning Leverett, Reese Lefevre, Stephen Dana, Eric Longer, Maximus the Rock Troll Jolly, Sam Akard, and Claire Mitchell. Let's go. All right, I see Brianna out there. Is she going to go? Uh -huh. Nah, she's in a sweatshirt. Yeah, no. the rules meeting, they said she's out for sure. Okay, good. Definitely not worth risking your body. No. <laughs> but she's already given us eight matches. I mean, that's a injury. lot of matches. Yeah. And I went back and looked at the matches that she did have, and she was getting cross-faced and Vaughn flu choked and all the stuff on her neck. And then Our first scheduled match will be from Team Supernatural Survival Gear, Anna Kanaj. Her opponent from such and such, Brianna Parocha, unfortunately sustained an injury, and she will be out for the remainder of the season. So due to that, Anna will receive two points for this match, and her team will also get the two points towards the total. Um, we wish Brianna a speedy recovery. So, for Supernatural Survivor Gear, first up, Tara LaRosa. And for Team Such and Such, Claire Mitchell. All right. And hey, we saw this yesterday. Tara, um, Claire's tough. Yeah. Tara got her in a lot of bad spots. <laughs> Claire's just hands down. What's going on? What if Claire just karate chopped her in the throat? <laughs> the Steven Seagalder. Oh, man. I think that would anger Tara. Like, yeah, that'd be a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I don't know. Now she found the brain stem. 
Uh, I'm glad. I'm glad somebody got that. Oh yeah. No. But Taryn have to shoot first, right? That's, that, what, that Steven, was... that's what Stevens always say. Exactly. Well, kind of, yeah. <coughs> oh man. So Tara Larosa with the the green rash guard, and Claire Mitchell on the bottom now. Wow, that's her sixth. Uh, single leg takedown like that, just sweeping to the side, cutting a nice angle, and that's super important, right? How she cuts to the side like that, it takes her out of all guillotine danger because her opponent isn't squared up to her, and she finds herself in really good guard passing situations. Tara's a beast, man. The weight class for these ladies is 135 pounds and under. Yeah, and I would say most of these girls, um, oh, Claire looking to get a heel hook. Oh, just trying to get this grip. Oh, man. Claire's in a great attacking position. Yeah. Have we seen Tara in heel hook danger? No, we have not. Oh, Tara, great job, though. Pushing her, putting herself into outside Ashi. Tara's game, man. Yeah. I've been very impressed uh, every time I've seen her. She's not looking to get the knee line free. She's not really worried about that. Claire looking for a little bit of payback from that Decatur qualifier. Huh? Yeah, she is. But Tara's super heavy on that leg that Claire's looking to attack, so that's really good. Hey, what have we learned this week? Don't bet against Claire. Mm -mm. I saw your ride up today. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> that's all We're saying. not talking about it. I, I understand. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> We got three minutes and 40 seconds. Just a note for all fans and, and competitors out there, the media always gets the last word. Yeah. Neener, neener. That's true, and you can do this job forever. Athletes, their day in the sun will set. As a media man, you can do this. You can be the media guy for, uh, for the PGF for the next 50 years. There we go. <laughs> uh, Katie, we haven't heard about another ladies' season yet. Um, we know that the next season is going to be 185 pounds for the gentlemen. Back in, though. Hey, I want to set up a Tara versus the bad guy fight. <laughs> That'd be fun. <laughs> That'd be fun. Elijah would be down for sure. <laughs> Three minutes remaining. Go to SupernaturalSurvivalGear.com. Check out his gear. He's got some awesome stuff. And Claire's been tough all week. Really nice work with the leg locks. Now Tara finds herself in the closed guard. And she's, she's performing much better than we saw in the uh, Decatur qualifier against Tara and then uh, what we saw yesterday. She's, she's really making improvements. Um, I, I'm going to be really interested to see how Claire M Mitchell looks in the next six months. Like how much confidence has she gained from this week of competing? And there she goes. Trangled up the guard. Now she's just stolen. Yeah, I, I think as the guard player, you should be forced to let go right here just because you could literally, die. like, she could just slam you on the con, you know, kind of that, she could just slam you. She's not slamming you because she's being nice. Right. So that's what makes this jujitsu instead of yeah, actual. Yeah, like, I, I know some tournaments have that street rule. Street fighting. <laughs> Yeah, because I know some tournaments have that rule, and I, I'm just a fan of it because, look, I don't want to see anybody get slammed, but I also mm -hmm. don't want to see somebody hold on uh, to close guard. Um, so you were talking about Elijah versus Tara. Brian oh. Brown comes in and says that would be like a Craig Jones versus Gabby Garcia from Wish. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Wow. Uh, but seriously, <laughs> if you made it CJJ rules, Tara might just do that. And Elisha says Tara would get broke off. <laughs> <laughs> We've got one minute and 20 seconds. Remaining. A bad guy never won for lack of words. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dude, we might see a huge shakeup in the card from R. You know what I'm saying? Like, we've got all these matches. We might, by the end of the day, we might... I'll say it might like be twice as long. Like, oh, yeah. even if we get $50,000. Like, Gordon Ryan will be here for $50,000, people. <laughs> He just will. He'll find a way. You hear that, Allie? Just, just, you know, 49 more Gs. <laughs> I mean, if you want to see your fiancé go against Gordon Ryan, <laughs> you're 140, uh, 150th of the way there. 
We've got 40 seconds left. And again, Claire proving that she's she's a tough cookie. And that's what was going to be. I, I'm really glad that Nakaya is you know up by 14 points right now. So it's not something like there's a woman in second that was you know supposed to face Bree that there's like mathematically they could win. Mm -hmm. um, because Claire hasn't given up points all week. She's been super, super tough. And so Juwani would have to finish her and Bree to just even have a chance now. Allie says she'd prefer to see uh, Mikey, so I'm assuming she's Mikey, Mikey Musa Mitch instead of uh, Gordon. Well, you could probably get him here for just some, some handmade uh, Maybe pizza. Maybe <laughs> You're bringing that homemade pizza? Claire looked great in that match. Yeah. That, that was a phenomenal match by Claire Mitchell. Yeah, it was phenomenal. It showed a lot of def defense, but, it, you know, uh, the PTF is about action. It's about attacking. It's about submitting. And we got the close, you know, we got the triangle close guard. Yeah, but she had a bunch of attacks uh, before that, and even after, you know, she's finished in that almost armbar position. Um, we're just so used to seeing, like, the, the wildness of, like, Matthew Boyles. <laughs> or... Juan Martinez, David Garcia. That was an, an unreal. Yeah. And we're ready for the next announcement. All right. This is going to be good. Rivers 18, Supernatural Survival Gear, Nathan the Irish Taco Chambers, and for team such and such, the Manaconda, Manning Leverett. Y'all make some noise. Manning uh, should be the big favorite in this match. Irish Taco have been one of the most fun guys to watch all week. Got a big win over Matthew Boyles, but jumping guillotine. He's trying to get this guillotine. Irish Taco has a very good guillotine, but he's holding on to it too long. He's got to be very careful of this Vaughn flu. We've seen Nakaya utilize it twice. You got the tap in one of her matches um, against Brianna, and then she really... Well, and Manning's already passed, so he's got his legs on the opposite side of, of Taco's body than his head, so really the guillotine is not going to happen. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't just go for that quick Vaughn flu. I, I feel like that was a great um, opportunity because you're getting you're getting six points with that. Mm. Would have been seven if Prime. if he would have uh, got that tap in uh, ten seconds. But instead, he's opting to take the back. And man, we've seen Manning Leverett's back game uh, last season. Deadly, deadly. <laughs> he's still in great position, even though he didn't score points yesterday. Oh, he's Ooh. just going for a tap. Armbar? Armbar. And your winner by submission, Manning Leverett. We want to send a thank you to Amanda Sharon Realty for purchasing the PGF belts. Manning will come to the winner's circle or not? One second. I got time, baby. <laughs> so if you guys have not seen these belts like yet, that. they are fantastic. Mm -hmm. We really appreciate Amanda Sharon Realty. Yeah, really nice That's armbar awesome. here. Surprised he went for the on bar so quick. Oh, keep going? Oh, I thought he wanted to talk. I wanted to talk to him. Okay. Well, next up then. Well, I, I think he knows that you know right now uh, he needs to get okay. a string oh, of submissions. Against Manning possible. Leverett. Ready? Okay. We're gonna have Jacob Mashburn representing Team Supernatural Survival Gear. Coach Caleb McAllister has used Jacob Mashburn as a defensive stopper before. Do you think that's what he's doing again? Um, yeah, Sean's, Sean's team's pretty banged up. Um, obviously, we've got the Rock Troll out there who is terrifying. But I'm going to imagine that the Rock Troll's going to go last. Um, he's in a phenomenal position to make the playoffs. In my mind, he's probably already made it, even mm -hmm. if he didn't score today. So I think we'll see him go last. And, I mean, we've Reese is compromised with the ankle. Um, Stevens had a rough week. Um, 
Uh, yeah, I think they're, they're probably just trying to get Manning off the board. Yeah, with, with Manning's break in that last match, uh, moves him up to 16 points uh, in fourth position. Manning in the double unders. Trying to pass around the side. Ashburn's tough, man. He's going to be a problem in a couple of years. His improvement. So Jacob is just a blue incredible. belt. And Manning is a brown belt. Uh, they were asking in the chat oh, yeah, what rank they were. But yeah, pgfhome.com will have their ranks as well. So Manning Leverett, the blonde on top right now, uh, the 10th line at Jacksonville, brown belt. Uh, he was the regular season of uh, PGF season three uh, runner-up, so he was second in, in total points, and that was 170 pounds. Uh, Jacob Mashburn in the PGF rash guard on bottom of uh, Renaissance Martial Arts Academy, uh, MMA in uh, Lynchburg, Virginia. Uh, he said a blue belt, um, you know, uh, came to jujitsu ju later in life. Uh, hmm. He actually got his kids started first, and, and then he, he joined. Yeah. I guess he just fell in love. Yeah, rumor has it he fell in love. He brought his kids in and then got rid of them once he fell in love with jiu -jitsu. <laughs> So he could train full time. You want to be good at jiu-jitsu, right? <laughs> kids are a hindrance. No, Tara is a purple belt under Hoist Gracie. And she's been offered a million times, like brown and even black belts. But she just is like, no, I just, she doesn't care. And she's been training. I mean, her first fight, I think, was like 21 years ago. She was legitimately one of like she's a women's pioneer in the, in the mixed martial arts uh, realm, Brazilian jiu-jitsu and MMA. So yeah, she's a purple belt. I mean, you go back and listen to Joe Rogan when he was interviewing Gina Carano, and they're talking about the, the pioneers of, of, of women's MMA, and Tara La Rosa is, is mentioned by the man himself, Joe Rogan. Yeah, that's all you need to know, right? <laughs> I mean, you know, a few hundred million listeners, I don't know how many, what, how many is up to, but uh, you can't be wrong. Yeah, and it was a different time, right? I mean, 20 years ago, like ADCC 20 years ago, a lot, a lot different than modern, and we see that, right? I mean, Tara's exactly. uh, in what place? Is she fifth? Uh, she is she's currently in, in, oh, actually, you're right. She's in fifth because Anna got those two points uh, from the forfeit. Yeah, so, yeah, you can see that, right? But she is still an ADC silver medalist. Fought Kyra Gracie. Like, Kyra Gracie, man. Bad news. I mean, another thing is that her, her, her jiu-jitsu is, is perfect for mixed martial arts. Yeah. That, that, that good top position, that pressure. Ooh, her versus Nakaya CJJ match would be pretty sick. Oh, man. be fire. Yeah, because I, I don't think any of the other girls would want that smoke. <laughs> no. <laughs> Two minutes remaining. Hey, Phil, how uh, you're saying the PGF Rashi is definitely fire. I think you should give a Lindsay. She, uh, she might be able to sell you one of those. The PGF Rash cards are $50, but if you're trying to get me to ship it, it's going to be more, and I will have to get your address and such. So you might have to shoot me a message on Facebook or Instagram or something. But if you're here, you're going to be here for the finale. They'll be on sale for $50. Just at a minute and a half left in this match. Mm. All right, the timer will keep running. Manning able to secure the mount position before they had a re reposition. Yeah, so you see, even right there, I mean, that was 14 seconds they mm -hmm. lost going back to the middle. And so <laughs> Kata probably took, uh, it was a good 50 seconds. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. It was a long time. Might have, uh, as a competitor, you might just start growing your hair out long. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, it's the no gi belt tie. I agree. You need a couple, uh, you need a minute to. Regather yourself. I gotta fix this hair. Gotta fix my bun, man. <laughs> and you can just see the frustration with Joanne's teammates and uh, during that time as those seconds tick by. 
And Allie, I got Billy his rash guard um, earlier today before everything started, so he's good to go. Yeah. Well, luckily, you know, we saw Joanne. She had a couple minutes on the back, and she had a really good attack. She just didn't quite. She was trying to go with, like, a high elbow grip. It was really cool. I'd never, never really seen that. She just didn't, wasn't able to apply enough pressure. And you could see Kato was never, like, even thinking about tapping. Yeah. Um, there we go. But... We're, this match is going to a draw, and the stopper. The stopper. That's who he is, man. I mean, you, you put on, you put role players. This match is a draw. Mm -hmm. Put role players on a team, and one of them we talked about before we you know, bring in the quintet format is that defensive stopper. And Jake Mashburn, that's your guy. Tough as nails. So Steven never got his interview with Manning. Well, there's been a lot of movement on the board here. So Dane Leak, of course, uh, at, at still in front, 34 points. We have uh, Samson, the hustler, from about at, at 24 now, taking the second position. Rock Troll Jolly is at 23, third place. David Garcia has moved into fourth place with 17 points. Alex Hall, haven't seen him yet, but he's got 15 points. Evan DeWitt with 14. Juan Martinez and Manning Leverett tied. Oh, pardon me, Manning just got the kill. So Manning Leverett's seventh place. Juan Martinez at 13. Nick Soff and Reese LaFever on the outside looking in. So you guys can keep track of this, uh, pgfhome.com. They have a stats page, and you can follow along. There'll be a little bit of delay, but you'll be able to watch it. And now we have the next announcement. Next up, we have from Team Supernatural Survival Gear, Mario Gayor and his opponent from Team Such and Such, Steven Dana. Oh, ho, ho, rematch. You think Mario's going to still be nice if he gets him that crucifix? I, I, I don't know how nice he was being. He <laughs> definitely wasn't like, uh, you. Did, like if Tara was in that position, um, there would have been blood. You know what I'm saying? Like Steven mm -hmm. would have been bleeding. Um, Mario looked incredible yesterday. Steven needs this. I mean, Sean was, Sean was like, no, Steven's, he's the best guy here. And he hasn't had the season. I mean, he's uh, got one heel hook break. Looked good on the first day. But yesterday, um, tough day for him. Mario really took it to him with that insane crucifix entry. It's one of those things like Mario hit some insane, like mm -hmm. ginger snap to crucifix yeah. entry. You're stuck in the crucifix for four minutes. How can you look good, you know? Like, you can't. Well, it's interesting. We, we talked about, you know, I asked him about it, picking him first. Because we saw some inconsistency with his performances in different qualifiers. Sometimes he looked fire sometimes it was kind of ho-hum um, and you know but Sean his actual coach he said hey he's gonna be ready for this uh, but I think you're probably right it just ended up being you know tough tough matchups he, he's faced yeah and we've talked about it. there's no there's no slouches this season welcome Aaron Daniels he says hello from Liver Liverpool so he's across the pond that means he gets to give us pounds. That's right. <laughs> right, and the Super Chat has not been um, very active today. So if you have a competitor and you'd like to make a donation, you can add that in the Super Chat and then let me know their name. Who did the, the donation go to? Shout out to Dr. Michael Cantrell, an orthopedic surgeon in our area, one of our team sponsors. Technical battle going on here. You see Mario is in shin to shin guard. Allie's already maxed out her super chat for this w the whole week, so you guys got to catch up. <laughs> Four minutes remaining. I want to see some bounties, folks. I mean, some of you guys out there, you have some missions these guys haven't hit that you love hitting, that you're known for. You know, put some money out there. I mean, I'm I'm known with my friends as dirty wrist locker, so I got 60 bucks on a wrist lock. You know, what's your signature move? And I want you guys to subscribe to the channel and join the channel. So you'll have to do that either by um, laptop or PC. You can get out of the chat, 
hit the join button, and then come back in. Yeah, both these guys need to finish. Oh, we see this diesel squeezel from the bottom position. This is a dangerous move, man. It's super unorthodox, very Mario-esque. <laughs> Three minutes remaining. And you see Mario, like, he's selling out for it. Mario needs to start, like, a bottom side control, uh, like, BJJ Fanatics instructional. Taro Milk Tea says, I'm a white belt, and my signature move is the fetal position. So <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We've all been there. Some of us are pretty close to still there. So Mario, obviously very dangerous. He, he's one of the most experienced veterans of the PGF in season one, season three, and now season four. Uh, out of 10th Planet O'Fallon, brown belt. Nice pass by Steven. He saw he wasn't ever in any real trouble with that diesel squeezel. He rides it out, he ends up in a great passing position. We saw this a lot last season from Sean's guys. They'd pass, they'd mm -hmm. go to the north-south, they would settle, and then they would look to expose an arm or take it back. And what's funny is that Mario was on Sean's team last season, and he was doing the same thing because Sean had him all doing it. Welcome Khalil, Khalil from Durham, North Carolina. Want to send a shout out to Ironclad Methods, one of our team sponsors. If you need help with your wrestling curriculum or just your personal wrestling, hit up ironcladmethods.com. Hey, she's talking to you, Elijah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they have an excellent in, uh, instructional uh, on Ironclad Methods about wrestling for BJJ. So, so if you need to up your wrestling game, uh, for, for your rolls, go hit them up. There's a minute and 10 seconds left. Been a really uh, methodical match. Slower paced. Mm -hmm. Steven trying to isolate, trying to get those knees. Nice pummeling by Steven. Fifty seconds. Yeah, but both these guys are in single-digit points for the season. They need, both of them need a submission. Yeah. Yeah, pessimistic. My, my, I used to pull guard all the time, too, and still the, until the Elkins brothers started teaching some wrestling classes at 10th Planet Decatur. Now, I, can, I can't wrestle with the best of them, but I can wrestle a little. <laughs> 20 seconds. 15 seconds. Yeah, this match is going to go to draw. Yeah, you can you can hear uh, Sean in the corner kind of calling out like, hey, you know, he's just he's just trying to survive. He's trying to stall you out. <laughs> Man, honestly, completely different match from yesterday. That's yeah. what's so crazy about this match will end in a draw about the PGF is like Mario dominated yesterday. Mm -hmm. Steven dominated today. Anything can happen in the PGF, but uh, talk about anything happening. With both of those losing this opportunity to score a submission, they're, they're going to have to get Rock yeah. Troll three submissions in a row style action in their next uh, matches if they're going to have any chance of making that playoffs. Another thank you to all, one of our team sponsors, Such and Such, Burgers and Tacos. They are always up for um, sponsoring the PGF. We really, really appreciate them. If you are in the area, go get a burger or a taco at Such and Such. I had some drunken waffle fries last night, but Ooh. we're going we're gonna to hear the next uh, players up right now. And our next matchup of the day from Supernatural Survival Gear, Billy Baxter and his opponent from Team Such and Such, Reese LaFever. said, Reese Lefevre, uh, right now on the outside looking in with 10 points. He's in 10th position. He needs to get a submission. 
mean, Billy, he's already guaranteed a, a spot on Saturday. Yeah, he, he's uh, this year's kind of battle Rama in the sense that in the chat, raised enough money. He's got just as big a fight as any of these guys Saturday. <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't care about the tournament. He just needs to know who his opponent is, who he's going to kill tomorrow. There we go. Sorry, Billy Baxter's in the red and uh, black rash guard on bottom right now. Reese Lefevre is in the purple rash guard on top. Um, I mean, just kind of fulfilling the, the stereotype of purple belts. Once they turn purple belt, they get all purple gear. Yeah. Phil in the chat is asking how often are these events? Have we been doing two a year? Um, yeah. Yeah. Kind of. Because, because it started, uh, uh, you know, spring of 2020. Yeah. We do spring and fall. Yeah. More like every nine months. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Don't uh, make us do math in public. <laughs> Reese is in a great position. He's passed. He's got Billy flattened out, both shoulders pinned to the mat. He needs a choke. He's on the outside of the bubble. And that's what's kind of uh, crazy, right? Like, he took a really bad pop, but because it's the foot... You can still perform, you know. Sometimes as a competitor, you've kind of got to weigh that in your head. Shoulder, it's a lot di like, it's you're not, different. Like, you're not going to be out there still. Well, you see, Reese's feet are probably not even on the mat. Yeah, and he's got that foot so taped up. I just I know so many guys that have competed with just destroyed feet. Like, just let it pop. And, um, yeah, he, he's, in, he's in a good position with four minutes left, under hook, in the mount. He's going to try and take the back. Yes, Kiahi. Billy literally has a Sharingan. And he, he, he said uh, you know, before the season started, he wanted to show his Sharingan was strong, <laughs> which I had asked my son about. I don't think we have some other choke going on right now. We did see some other choke by Dane Leak yesterday. That's how we uh, took out Matthew Boyles. All right, he's looking for this Kimura. Nice work by Billy. Excellent guard work right there. Got his knee wedged in. And that's tough, man, especially with these small guys. Mm -hmm. Like, you're getting a Kimura on a small guy. They're so flexible. They're so good at inverting. The legs are always a problem. And we saw that right there. Now Reese is, I mean, gets a quick pass out. That's huge. Because I'm telling you, like, every second that passes by, mm -hmm. one step closer to a draw, and we might find Reese outside of the top eight. We've said it time and time again during the season, a sense of urgency is required. With a quintet format, you, you have limited opportunities to get on that mat. You need to make the most out of all of them, especially if you're not in that top eight. Yeah. Yeah, Reese has looked technically flawless this match outside of the Kimura that Billy defended very, very well. But um, Sean seemed coming out more methodical today. I, I used that word in the last match between Steven and Mario. This match, Reese just slowing the pace down, um, grinding, trying to, trying to just work, you know, trying to open up Billy Baxter. But he's got two minutes. Elisha says, these guys aren't finishers like me. <laughs> I mean, there's no arguing with that. Okay, I mean, if you ever could, you know, like, very few people ever got a draw. I think we had two draws against Elisha last season, maybe? Yeah, um, he had two draws. Or there were two draws against Elijah, but uh, I don't think that was Elijah's best performance last season. He won. Oh, we've got this reverse triangle. Yeah, he's got this reverse triangle. He's going to finish. And he gets the flat oh, tap. Oh, wow. And your winner by submission, getting six points, Reese LaFever. True Wear is another one of our sponsors, and um, they are here to support the grappling community, and they say they're looking for uh, some athletes to represent. So check them out on Instagram at True Wear, T-R-U-W-E-A-R. 
And just like that, uh, six points gets the kill, and now it's time for fifth place. Oh, we've got somebody from New Zealand, Aaron Langman. Hello from, I can't say that city name, New Zealand. <laughs> Welcome. Next up, Team Supernatural Survival Gear, Jacob Arp. Yeah, um, Elijah last season won the regular season. And again, I didn't think it was his, his best performance that week. I know he was dealing with an injury that kept him from the finals. Um, he's just, he's incredible, man. He, he's one of my favorite guys to watch in the entire, like, jiu-jitsu community. Um, I'd put him up there against anybody. He's had some awesome matches against guys like John Carlo Donny, And um, he... he I mean, whether it's Ethan Perlinson or Bodani, like, he gets his entries off and he gets into his offense. And if you can get your offense off against those guys, you can get them off against anybody in the world. Ah, we got Ashton. Ashton, what's up, brother? Five minutes and 19 seconds. Jacob Ard. Jacob Ard, um, he's had a tough week. Yeah, Arp's a purple belt out of Gracie Jiu Jitsu Savannah. Previously uh, trained with Scramble Jiu Jitsu. Um, he's that purple belt as well. Uh, one of those same style guys like Matthew Boyles comes straight at you. Uh, yeah, high motor. Um, you know, just like you said, hasn't gotten the results he's wanted. Got, got one break. Uh, but. Yeah, he's won two and two. Had five matches. Um, yeah, like you said, one break. Tough, tough Risa Fever in front of him. And Jacob's one of those guys, like, he pushes the pace. If I hear, oh, I used to train at Scramble, I'm like, dude, like. PJ says he's got an MMA fight in three weeks. Oh, no way, at 145. And Robert, hello from Listow, Ireland. Nice. Welcome, Robert. Here's how I kind of do my like jujitsu fandom. Obviously, homegrown people, Tenth Planet of Decatur people first. Mm -hmm. Then my like main homies in the community. Okay. Then PGF people. So if you've competed okay. for the PGF and if you're not going against Tenth Planet of mm -hmm. Decatur people, and you're not going against you know some of the dudes I'm close with that uh, you know I've met throughout the years of travel and training, then I'm rooting for you. Mm -hmm. So Jacob Bard, I hope you win your fight, brother. Uh, he's got a fight in front of him. Reese, man. Reese looks re-energized. Re got to think yesterday he was being cautious. You know, how much of, of um, his mind, like, after he took that, that pop from Nick Saff. Yeah, actually start thinking, ooh, is it serious? Ooh, did I really hurt myself? Yeah, because, like, in that second match, like, how, how much was he in his own head? Right. See, Jacob framing on the face. Keeping up with Jones, the Lonnie Jones podcast adventure. He has life coaching, psychological principles, spiritual insights, and just plain old common sense. Check out that podcast. Yeah, Lonnie, a, Trevor, uh, a treasure trove of knowledge just on so many different subjects been a great mentor for a lot of people in the North Alabama community, not just at 10th Planet Decatur. Um, just, he speaks all over the world. He does. He's just phenomenal. Check out his podcast. Well, Kevin, actually, I will be commentating. So I will be cornering neither Mr. Handsome Kevin Sherrill or Travis Thomas. In all seriousness, Kevin, definitely one of my favorite guys from the PGF. Um, I love his style, and I'm really, I mean, 185, that, that's definitely uh, a season he's going to do very well in. But we got Jacob R. two minutes left. So these guys are exchanging leg locks now. Got Reese with that straight ankle lock grip. He's going to go to this Aoki. The next, uh, oh. the next quintet is going to be Sean versus Kamoy. Okay, good. 
And your winner by submission, Reese Lefever. Good. Jacob didn't let it go. He took it right to the edge. You could see in his face that he was like trying not to tap, and he waited till the last second. But was it a hill hook or straight ankle? It was an Aoki lock. Uh -huh. And there we go with that. Another submission by Reese Lefever moves him up to 19 points, and now he's in third place. So there you go. All you gotta do is string a couple of submissions together, and you gotta you. You might be, he might get to the top if he keeps going. We'll just see. Kevin Sherrill says you can just yell from the commentary table. He's going to bring you a megaphone. <laughs> so we have Dane Leak still top with 34. Samson Fallenbaut now takes the sec uh, second place with 24. Reese moves into third position with 19. David Garcia there in fourth with 17. Manning Leverett now in fifth with 16 points. Alex Hall. Uh, sixth place with 15, Evan DeWitt, seventh place with 14, and I believe Nick Seff might be next with 12, but I gotta confirm that. Oh, it's on the screen. Thank you so much. So, Evan DeWitt with, with uh, 14 there. There we go. Thank you so much. And we're ready for All the next All right, time. ladies and gentlemen, you get a special treat today. I thought we were going to have to wait and pay for this tomorrow. But it's the matchup you've all been waiting for. It's the Great Day League versus the Rock Troll. Oh, and man. <laughs> well, here, here it is. Here it is. The oh, two man. best competitors this week, both coming in with six wins. And... You know, I was talking to um, man Max coming in like a freight train. <laughs> I was talking to Maximus coach, Maximus's coaches, and they actually said that the reason he's like once Dane Leak is because stylistically Dane will be his toughest opponent. Okay. The way Dane plays, mm. so that's the guy they were most worried about for him. And so, uh, when we talked a couple of weeks ago, obviously both these guys six wins. Dane has a loss. Maximus undefeated, six wins and three draws, but he gets the chance he wanted. He's facing one of the top black belts in the country. We're going to find out um, how Maximus stacks up against the Great Dane Leak. Okay, so Max in his head, this is his hardest uh, mm -hmm. match. He's like, bring it on. This is a Super Bowl. This is what he's been looking forward to. Yeah. And Dane Leak in the black uh, rash guard on bottom out of uh, Clinch Martial Arts Academy. <sighs> Nice, early. That, that's one of those, uh, you know, haymaker lands right there. Tripod sweep. Um, but, hey, Maximus comes right back and gets aggressive. Toriando. We've seen Dane regard very easily so far. So. Man, Dane is so hard to get in on the legs. From a guy that, like, doesn't really do leg locks, we've never seen Dane finish a leg lock. He's so hard to entangle. Four minutes and 15 seconds. Oh, man. So Maximus Rockroll Jolly in the top there in the purple rash guard is your purple belt out of 10th Planet Cookville. Yeah, Maximus, the most aggressive we've seen him in any of his matches. Um, you can see that this, uh, this is kind of his championship in his mind. <laughs> I was thinking about a throat post there for a second. Buy your leather flip-flops at shoptohold.com. Custom-made leather flip-flops and bags. Well, it looks like the Great Dane League has slowed down the rock troll. And that's what they were saying because Maximus really likes chaos, right? He's very good. Guys are um, undisciplined is the word I would use. Dane Leak is probably the most, him and David Garcia are the two most disciplined guys here. Never really see those guys in any danger. Um, obviously, Dane got tapped, but...
another one of our sponsors, Supernatural Survival Gear. Go to SupernaturalSurvivalGear.com. Rash guards, shorts, spats, geese, sweatshirts, t-shirts, camo, tie-dye, all kinds of um, things. Go check them out. SupernaturalSurvivalGear.com. Nice pass by Maximus. Moving to the north-south. Oh, what's he got on the back side over there? Yeah, he's, he's got a scoop grip. Man, he's, Dane League is so good. It's been an excellent match. Nice Definitely a match uh, that we could see in the finals. Y'all make some noise. This is your number one and number two players right now in the league. Let's go. I really want to see um, Maximus versus Reese. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Trying to get Reese's uh, foot popped completely off. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think uh, stylistically it would just be a, a great, great match. Got a minute 20. And I was wondering, you know, we don't really see any urgency from Dane Leak. Like I said, he's by far the highest point getter so far. So, yeah. Uh, I, he, there's no need. I mean, who would have thought this goes to a draw? Oh. Maximus has just he's been so good all week. Looking for that scoop grip. He was telling me this is his favorite entry. Yeah, this is his favorite entry, but Dane, so aware, clears the knee line. Maximus just so explosive. Fifteen seconds. It's throat posting. Maximus is powerful. You can see it, those knee slices and mm -hmm. the way he's passing. Um, and there we go. A lot of respect on that mat right now. This match will end in a draw. Dang, come first. I'll talk to you the next, coach, Max. Come on down here. Uh, I don't really talk to a lot of guys who get draws, but that was one that I was really looking forward to. Uh, you guys are currently one and two. Samson's tied right now for second also. Um, now that you got your hands on him going into the playoffs, how do you feel it's going to go if you guys match up again? I feel good being able to get to an EBI overtime, and uh, for starting on each other's backs, I think that's going to be trouble for not me. <laughs> trouble for Maximus. <laughs> yes, sir. Cool, man. Well, great job so far. I think you got one more match today. At least one. Um, I'm going to have to take a look at where we're all sitting on the points. I want to keep first place for the season. So, How important is it to you to be the PGF champion? That is the number one goal. The, the season would be awesome to win the season as well. But winning that nice new belt right here, that's number one. That's what I'm talking about, man. Great work, man. Thank you. Maximus, come on, buddy. Good work. Step on down. You've been calling for that match all week. Man, I was so excited to get to see it. Uh, same question to you that you have to him. Uh, being first and second, you guys are going to match up in the playoffs maybe. Now that you've got your hands on him, what do you think is going to happen if you see him again? Well, I got what I wanted. I got the match. Even though I didn't submit him, uh, I made him really tired so that he'll dread competing against me in the Finale. Do you, do you think he was scared of you and mostly just trying to survive the whole day? I don't know, but he's got false hopes on the belt. That belt belongs to me. That's what I'm talking about. Let's go, Rock Troll. <laughs> See you back uh -huh. up here later, bro. I love it. Oh, that's awesome. Calling his shot. I love Max. I love the Rock Troll. 
<laughs> it's the last day. Everybody wants to get feisty. Everybody's trying to get feisty. Womp, womp, womp before I forget. John Holloman. $50 goes to Reese the Fever. All right, our next uh, match of the day from Supernatural Survival Gear, Anna Kanaj versus such and such, Claire Mitchell. I put a lot of uh, importance on who wins the regular season. In my mind, it's just as, Im like, just as impressive, if not more, being the, the top uh, point scorer. Like, you're going mm -hmm. through a gauntlet during the regular season. Anything can happen in the playoffs. Season one, we saw Elijah Carlton, 24 for 24. Season two, we saw Hunter Colvin, mm -hmm. all subs, all finishes, regular season and playoffs. Last season, we saw Elijah Carlton man, make it look pretty easy for the most part. And, uh, this season, we're seeing Dane Leak. Um, he, he's the clear guy. Uh, sticks and Stones, we don't have a date for the next season yet. And womp, womp, womp from Hannah, $50 for TJ. I, I agree with you 100%, Matt. Uh, it, the gauntlet, it, it, for, the, for the finale, that's one day you could have a good day. The gauntlet is you have to show up day in and day out, you know, face everyone, and, and then walk away. Man, that's, that's way tougher. All right, I've been told that we're going to make a button for the womp womps now. It's not going to be me making the noise <laughs> next time. That might be for next season, but uh, I think I'm going to have, have to have a button. Are you going to be the noise? Or I don't know. We haven't decided yet. It might be my voice mm. making the noise, and then I just hit the button. I don't know. Uh, we should get, like, Morgan <laughs> Freeman. <laughs> well, remember, at first it was it was Brandon himself. Yeah, he started it. Yeah, but he always said it was a wob, wob, wob. No, I go womp womp. <laughs> all right. And we all appreciate those, you think? <laughs> nice leg attack, man. Claire, you can see the confidence she's gained these past, mm -hmm. past two days. Well, yeah, once you go that many matches and you know nobody subbed you, you can kind of maybe open up a little bit and, like, let's yeah. go for some attacks. I'm really interested in her match versus Joani. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be coming okay. up. Yeah. So we still got a bunch of jujitsu. I, I know you guys have been um, – I've been blown away by what you've seen so far, but I'm telling you, this is just the beginning. We got three, no, excuse me, two more quintets. So we're going to move to block six. Mm -hmm. so we're almost halfway. And then we got the tournament tomorrow. Well, I guess the next match is going to be Tara versus Brianna, so Tara will get the two. So this Correct. Is, at the end of this match, we'll be halfway through, guys. So Anna Kanaj on top, out of 10th Planet Atlanta, brown belt. Uh, mission before, she, she came to 10th Planet Atlanta as a brown belt you know, uh, from a traditional jiu-jitsu gym. So it kind of gives her that, that kind of position over submission, you know, heavy passing type style. Yeah, she's looked great all week. Hasn't scored the point total um, that she was hoping for, but I think she's shown really good jiu-jitsu. She's been subbed twice, once by uh, Nakaya. And then once by Joani. But she's had a great week. I really think all the ladies have um, outside of, of Brianna. You know, Brianna, the smallest competitor. And I really say she didn't have a great week. For her, it was a lot more just about coming in and getting experience. It just sucks. Like, she didn't have a great week because she got injured. <laughs> Anytime you get injured, it's not a good week. Thank you guys for supporting my womp womps. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I think I'm sold on Morgan Freeman. <laughs> well, I mean, what if we got you doing a Morgan Freeman impression? Or Kevin Hart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. We could have different ones. like. Oh, that's true. Like The Rock. <laughs> that would be cool. We've got two minutes remaining. So Claire Mitchell's on bottom. She's out of uh, 10th Planet Huntsville and Florence BJJ, also a purple belt. Well, pardon me, not also, but just she is a purple belt. All right, we got a minute 45 left. This is what I was kind of talking about is 
uh, Anna, you know, really starting to take over this match. And I think we're just going to see Claire, like, she is going to fight tooth and nail to not get submitted. <laughs> well, that's a good question. So Ben Revered says, isn't, th isn't there another guy from each team? But that was only five. Yeah, I thought that was only five competitors. Yeah, Eric Longard didn't compete. And who's the oh, other? Yeah, I can't see five. their team. But I didn't line everything up according to teams, so. Do we see the top though? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so Caleb's, no, Caleb's just team all went. Oh yeah. So Sean's team won. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So Sean, so there was nobody left. Yeah. So Sean's team took the W because uh, Eric Longar and oh. Sam didn't compete. We didn't see Sam McCoy. Wait, either. what's going on with Eric? No, no, no. The, the, their whole team was gone. Oh. So the, yeah, they 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 won that that quintet. Portion. Oh, okay, okay. But of course, you know, the to win the team match, we were including both the quintet portion and the ladies matches. So we'll, after this match, we'll get the announcement of who had the most points. Oh! At 14 seconds. Is she going to lose? Yeah, but Anna knows how much time's up at that. 10 seconds. This is exactly like Nakaya. She's been here before. She's going to die. Her She's eyes are going to big. Sleep. She might. I don't know. She did not look concerned at all. <laughs> it was not me. This match will be a draw. Man, what a great back take by Anna. Right into a rear naked choke. There's nothing better than just pulling somebody into it. And our next match, naked. unfortunately, due to injury, Brianna Parocha will be out. Tara La Rosa will get the two points for the victory today. Uh, we'll take a small break here, have some interviews, and then we'll be right back with our next match. Huh? So we've had some shakeups. Uh, obviously, we, you know, Maintain uh, Dane Leak at number one for me. Such and Such has 12, Supernatural Survival Gear, four. So the winner, Team Such and Such. You won. <laughs> yeah, so we didn't see Caleb McAllister's team score a point because both their points um, came from Brianna's, too. So it's 12 to four. Oh, wow. So they were shut out today. Day three looking a lot different than day two. Well, that's right, because yeah. such and such, you know, they didn't do so hot yesterday. The one consistency has been Team Elkins. Mm -hmm. Team Elkins has been the best team by far, top to bottom, when we throw in the girls and the guys. Like, you do the mixture. And um, Chewy did a phenomenal job picking his team. Yes, we'll see he we did. So, uh... If Mark has these updated for Team 3 Ironclad with 22 points, so we're just going from the day? No, he, uh, if you scroll down, he has a bottom Oh, down he has there. accumulation. Um, okay, so Ironclad has 102 points. Wow. Dr. Michael Cantrell's team has 65 points, and Supernatural Survival Gear, 63, so cl really close to Team Cantrell, and such and such with 52 points. So I think one we have we have the storyline of, of you know uh, Chewy doing such a great job and the Matt Elkins coming in there you know to, to help guide the team and, and do the strategy of, of who to put where and so they're they're doing phenomenally well but we've just seen a big shake up uh, in the rankings for the gentlemen of course Dane Leake still in the lead with 34 points Rock Troll 23 points and you know neither of them add any points to their totals um, but we have I'm sorry Samson actually overtook. The Rock Troll uh, with with his submission, so he's now at 24 points in second place. Maximus still right in there, third place with 23 points. Uh, Reese with a couple of submissions moves up to 19 points, fourth place. David Garcia uh, also received uh, got a submission, got uh, 17 points. Manning Leverett with the sub submission as well goes into six. Alex uh, Hall, you know, haven't seen him yet, but he's at 15 points. Evan DeWitt, ooh, now he's back on the, on that bubble at eighth spot. Uh, and then we have Juan Martinez, who was in, uh, is now just in that spot, outside spot, looking in at 13 on that ninth place. And uh, Nick's off, you know, still within striking distance uh, with 12 points. So we've yeah. seen. And we still have half the day to go. There we go. Yeah, but uh, Matt Elkins, $500 coming his way. 
<laughs> wrestling is all the rage right now in no gi jiu jitsu. Um, Coach Jake, Ironclad Wrestling. Wrestling is a part of most grapplers game that they just avoid like the plague. It's a real vulnerability for some higher belts that are otherwise great grapplers. It does not have to be that way though. At Ironclad, we're doing some game changing work and we've created some innovative stuff for you guys. You need to go check out Ironclad Methods. There's a Wrestling for Jiu Jitsu course. Pick that up, it'll help you out. Whether you're a white belt that's just looking to get some self-confidence or an upper belt that could definitely use some improvement. If you're trying to get your wrestling game right, you gotta go check out Ironclad Methods. We'll see you on the mat some more soon. Hey, are you a jujitsu dork? Yeah, me too. My name is Brandon McCatherine. I'm a 10th Planet Jiu Jitsu black belt under Eddie Bravo. Here on this channel, you're going to find all kinds of content. I do one minute Jiu Jitsu hacks, I got full seminars, instructionals, Jiu Jitsu breakdowns, and then every Friday we do a show called Not the BMAC Show, which that'll make sense. Just watch it, it'll make sense. My goal is to be your Morpheus. You can be Neo, but let me be your Morpheus. Let me pull you up out of the Jiu Jitsu matrix. And let you see how simple it really all is. Be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, make sure you leave a comment. I read all the comments. All right, I'm here with Team Sessions Sessions Coach Sean Applegate, the defending team coach champion. Sean, uh, how do you like the format this year with the quintet versus last year where it was kind of every man for himself? Um, it's really cool, man. Like, uh, this format, so it's not like an actual quintet, right? right? Like, kind of at all. So, it's its own thing, which makes it that much more cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, a standard quintet is like, all right, cool. Like, when they say quintet, it's like, all right, quintet strategy. We need to make sure we eliminate the other team, have a guy left on our team. But in this format, that's like literally the only way to win in quintet. Mm. And it's literally useless here. Like, if your team eliminates the other team and you still have guys, like, cool, man. You get nothing for that, right? That's so true. it changes the dynamic of everything. So I actually think it's super cool and super interesting because it's a unique rule set that you can literally only find here. No, that's very interesting. I hadn't even really considered that as a, as a thing, man. That's really cool. Uh, your guys are, are competing hard, and it seems like they're just having a hard time closing the deal sometimes. Uh, do you think it's just the level of defense guys have now, or is it just that everybody's just kind of trying to get away from your people? Man, I really honestly think it's a little bit of everything. I think, like, these guys on the opposite teams are doing a great job of, of playing defensively when they get put in bad spots, which is beautiful to see. It's, you know, it's good jiu-jitsu. Also, I think uh, a bunch of my guys are having a really slow start this week. Uh, sometimes when you compete, you have the, the performance of your life, and sometimes you just don't. And I think they're just lagging a little bit. But then I also think, too, like, um, strategically, you know what I'm saying? Like, as far as, like, people trying not to. I think in the last match, we just saw guys, like, literally just not fighting back. Like, can we just shell up and survive? You know what I mean? Which is totally fine. All those things are valid strategies. So, yeah, it's been, a, it's been tough with the guys so far. But you know what, dude? Like, that's competition. And uh, they got to fight those fights, man. I can't be mad at them. You know what I mean? If you had one standout from the season, who would you say it is? The whole season, everybody? Yeah. Oh, that's easy. Claire Mitchell, dude. Claire Mitchell. Like, Claire came in. She's she's kind of quiet. She's, you know, like, all these things. And, and I heard a lot of people kind of saying, like, man, what are you going to do with your girls? Like, they probably lose every match, yada, yada, whatever. And when Claire went out there the first day, I was like, look, I, I don't know your game. You know, I don't know much about you. We never really met before today. But, you know, do your thing. And every day, not only has she easily been the toughest competitor on the mat, like, by far, uh, she's also gotten better every single day. First day, she has survived everything. Second day, she tapped a brown belt or black belt, I'm not sure, tapped her. Today, straight offense against her first opponent and then her second opponent, you know, she's much more defensive. But, man, watching that girl go from, like, I don't know, we'll see what happens, to, like, I'm about to go out here and just do this thing, man, it's been beautiful. She's a standout to me. No, definitely. She came out there and she cut that promo about the haters, and I was like, okay, Claire, you're here to play the game, man. Well, cool, Sean. Thank you for your time, man. Is there anything else you want to say to the people? Uh, man, thank you guys for tuning in. If you guys are, are watching, supporting, doing whatever, thank you guys so much. Um, and our team's just going to finish out strong, and I think we have three guys in the finale so far in the running, so hopefully we can take that too. Nice, man. Thank you, Sean.
The separation of talent and skill is one of the, 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 the greatest misunderstood concepts for people who are trying to excel, who have dreams that want to do things. Talent you have naturally. Skill is only developed by hours and hours and hours of beating on your craft. I've never really viewed myself as particularly talented. Where I excel is ridiculous ridiculous, sickening work ethic. You prepare, you do everything the right way, you do everything you're supposed to do, and then you go in and you lose in the first round to somebody who was just better prepared than you were, or they were just better than you were, or you just messed up. It's supposed to hurt. That sting is what propels you to do better next time. That's what propels you to grow. We don't grow doing the comfortable thing all the time. Well, you never lose. No, you gotta lose. You're supposed to lose. We grow at the edge of our current capabilities. We have to play on the edge, on the extremes of what we're capable of right now if we wanna grow. If we don't do that, then there's no becoming the next thing. There's no evolution. It's always just in the comfort zone. So your growth always lies in the losses. It lies in the failures. You have to seek those and look for them. You have to give your best. You have to give 100% of yourself in these pursuits, knowing that it might hurt. They come in, they're yeah. afraid to lose this game of death because really that's why jujitsu is so fascinating and such a beautiful thing because really it applies to life in, in on the streets, saving your family, protecting your, your children, protecting your wife, your wife protecting your children and, and back and forth your children knowing jujitsu and protecting their father and son you know whole family where where everyone does jujitsu that, that's you know that increases your chance chances of survival it's a great way to exercise it's yeah. a great discipline yeah. it's it's great for your body it's great for your mind like after we leave jujitsu class tell me when are we more like loose relaxed and silly it's gonna take time. Oh, you don't have it on day one. I'm not. Oh, I'm not. It must be so that. hard to not be perfect <laughs> right at the beginning. My son asked me, hey dad, is there really such a thing as superpowers? And I'm like, Jiu Jitsu. It's challenging to your physical body for sure, but more so than that, it's challenging to your mind. It's challenging to your your thoughts about yourself, you know, about what you're capable of and what you're not capable of and, you know, where you stand in the physical hierarchy of the people around you, all that stuff is challenging. And man, most people don't want to be challenged, just to be honest with you. Most people are very normal. They're very average and they're happy being average. Or they're, they think they're happy being average. A lot of times I think you just don't know that there's something better out there. But yeah. I think people don't want to be challenged because they're afraid that they'll have to become uncomfortable. It was this conquistador. He brings his people over on his boats. They land on the shores of the Aztec army. And as they storm the beaches, they're met by this giant army coming down to engage them in combat. This is a problem. And when the people see the size of the army, when the conquistador soldiers see the size of the army. They start to turn, like their spirit begins to turn. And Cortez looks back to the ships and he says, burn the boats. And they light the boats on fire. And he looks to the people and he says, we either win or we die. Those are the choices. There are times in your life, whether it's for your martial arts pursuit, or whether it's for your job, or whether it's asking this girl to marry you, or whatever, there are times when it's time to burn the boats. It's time to go all in. It's either we go or we die. You know what I'm saying? The first step before anybody else in the world believes it is you have to believe it. There's no reason to have a plan B because it distracts from plan A. Jiu-Jitsu is not just um, a cool martial art to do. It's not just about self-defense for me. 
Like jujitsu is the filter now through which I see the world. So I, I look at everything through the scope of jujitsu or, or how I learned jujitsu is how I learn other things now. So I, I really, I learned how to learn through training and studying and being so like intensely obsessed with Brazilian jujitsu. I think martial arts, jujitsu in particular, gives such an easy to follow pathway towards mastery. Like it, it lays out this thing where it, look, if you'll just show up to practice and do the practice and you just do this consistently, then the results are right there. And so it's such an easy to lay out path towards excellence and mastery that I really think that's the best gift that it gives is laying out the route to excellence for you. It's an art that anybody can do. Children, old ladies, they all do it. It's really, really easy. It's, I'm not trying to sell it to, to I, obviously I want to make money, but it's the truth. The truth yeah. is anybody can learn it. All you have to do is just show up to your local jujitsu school and just watch. Just go and just watch for a couple times. It's free. You don't have to commit to it. Just tell the guy you want to watch and you watch and you realize, oh my God, I had it all wrong. Well, jiu-jitsu is the only martial art where it really works like in the Bruce Lee movie. Yeah. Where the little guy really can beat the big guy. Yeah. So you're going to watch this from wherever you're at. I want you to try Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I want you to get involved with it. It's hard, but that's exactly why I want you to do it, because it is hard. That's the reason that you need to start putting some attention into it. And it's going to be one of the best decisions that you ever made for yourself. And if you listen to this and you do get started, a couple of years from now, I want you to remember and I want you to send me a message and be like, thank you. Because <laughs> you will, you will thank me. To be the best, you have to be the best. We are just days away from making history. October 26th marks the beginning of a new era in sports jujitsu. PGF season four is about to go down and the best grapplers in the Southeast are gearing up to put on a show. 155 pound men and 135 pound ladies will all try their hand at PGF Gold. Waiting for the newcomers is PGF veteran Dane Leak and Manning Leverett. Each man hungry to return to the PGF stage and establish themselves as pioneers of the world's first Jiu Jitsu league. Will the newcomers show the evolution of submission grappling? Or will we once again learn that there is no substitute for experience, wisdom, and hard work? The PGF can only end one way. 24 men will enter the gauntlet only to be eliminated one by one until only the PGF season four champion is left standing. You don't want to miss the only jiu-jitsu league in the world. It all goes down live and free on YouTube October 26th. This is the PGA. Wrestling is all the rage right now in Nogi Jiu-Jitsu. Um, Coach Jake, Ironclad Wrestling. Wrestling is a part of most grapplers game that they just avoid like the plague. It's a real vulnerability for some higher belts that are otherwise great grapplers. It does not have to be that way though. At Ironclad, we're doing some game changing work and we've created some innovative stuff for you guys you need to go check out Ironclad Methods. There's a Wrestling for Jiu-Jitsu course. Pick that up, it'll help you out. Whether you're a white belt that's just looking to get some self-confidence or an upper belt that could definitely use some improvement. If you're trying to get your wrestling game right, you gotta go check out Ironclad Methods. We'll see you on the mat some more soon. We're getting ready to start block six, the final block. And we were discussing during this intermission, point-wise, what will the eighth place point getter have? My prediction is 18, but no clue. We saw more points scored, I think, um, this, this previous in block five mm -hmm. than we did any other block. We said before, the sense of urgency has to be there, and they, and they showed it. A lot of people knew they were on the, either on the outside looking in or they were close to the bubble, and, and so they knew they had to get some submissions. They had to put points on the board, and they did that. Uh, so we saw people just just jump up in the in the rankings again. Samson Fombout, you know, went went from zero points after day one. Now he's tied for second place with the Rock Troll. Again, just answering the call. Reese Lefevre, he he was tied for eighth place coming into today. 
seriously on that bubble, and then boom, gets in there, gets nine points, nine points. And, and now he's in fourth place. I, matching, actually surpassing what you think is going to be the lowest uh, amount. So he might be safe right now. I, I think Dane, Maximus, Samson, and Reese are safe. I think David, with just one win, he's 100% safe. Um, but you got guys like Alex Hall, man. He got – he didn't go. He hasn't gone yet. He, he hasn't gone yet. So he missed – opportunities to score and he finds himself in seventh place but he didn't have a match mm -hmm. and so how much did that hurt him a lot uh, and you know he's gonna be super hungry coming out when he has those mat uh, the mats for the first time samantha's asking what did the teams get if they win the coach gets five hundred dollars but the team gets no so these guys are all getting paid so <laughs> based on their draft position and I can, i'm not quite sure of the actual payout i know like first round draft picks were paid seven hundred and fifty dollars and so these guys are all being paid, um, some more than others, just depending on where they were picked. Right. So the, so the team aspect is just a, another, like, part of the gameplay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's all about, for these competitors, it's way more about the individuals. Honestly, exactly. the team thing doesn't really matter for the, especially the men. Like, the ladies is being determined today. We, we already know we're going to be crowning Nakia Jackson as season four, the first female champion in mm -hmm. PGF history. Mathematically, she's already won. And for the guys, we're going to figure that out tomorrow. But, yeah, the team thing, it's, it's just fun. It adds camaraderie. It adds a different element, and it's you know, part of a season-long thing. But right, yeah, and we needed like a, a team if we were going to do the quintet style. Yeah. So. And the teams, especially with the quintet style, made the coaches relevant. Yes. Right. They were, they were kind of just like figureheads last season. I mean, you, you, some of them spent more time developing their teams, getting game plans. But this season, the coaches were key the because the figuring out who to put out where in that lineup was stage. so huge. Right. You had to implement some strategy this season. While we were on break, we had a bounty. So, womp, womp, womp in the chat. Eric gives $50, and he wants to see a ham sandwich. And, yeah, we already know who the team champion is. It's, it's Team Elkins. They dominated. A lot of that due to having the top point getter. Um, so are they so far ahead that they can't, they can't be caught back up to? Oh, yeah. No, they're, they're up by a lot. But I think you're saying that they got the top point getter by far of the ladies. Yes. They chose Nakaya first, you know, a very shrewd move, knowing that she had guaranteed matches and that she is a killer. Yeah, and they also got Kata. I mean, Nakaya and Kata together were a, really a force. Mm -hmm. They were by far the best female team, yes. point-wise. It's not even close. And so that strategy paid off. You know, a lot of people didn't know. We saw two different strategies because we saw Kamoy, first pick was a female. Mm -hmm. Joanne had a good season. She missed some opportunities on day one, and that's what's going to cost her, like, a chance. You know, because her and Nakaya had two draws. Um, but in that second match, we really saw, like, Joanne had to win, and Nakaya was more just kind of like, uh, you know, she had that uh, Von Flew attempt, but it wasn't, it wasn't a match she had to win. And we saw yeah. the urgency from Joanne. I think we saw with Joanne, she, she had that uh, unfortunate serious pop when, when, when Tara had her in that scarf hold with the bent arm bar. And I think that somewhat limited her. Uh, but we, we're about to start our next block right now. Right, guys, and what you're seeing right now is a replay of Claire versus Tara. Okay, we're ready for our next match. Team such as such is the first of the stage with their coach, Sean Applegate. Athletes include... Brianna Perocha, Manning Leverett, Reese Lefevre, Stephen Dana, Eric Longer, Maximus Jolly, Sam Akerd, and Claire Mitchell. And their opponents, Team Cantrell. Coach Kamoy Anderson, athletes Joanne Chamberlain, Anthony Molina Valdez, Noah Randolph, Charles Muxo, Matthew Boyles, Juan Martinez, Samson Famabout, and Emily Hauser.
Our first match was scheduled to be Bro, uh, Brianna Porocha versus Joanny Chamberlain, but due to injury, Joanny received the two points for that one. So we will have from team such and such, Claire Mitchell versus from team Cantrell, Emily Hauser. Y'all give it up. This is a really interesting matchup. Um, Claire has had an interesting season. Both these ladies have. Um, not a lot of points from either of them, but every lady has been, has been entertaining and has fought tooth and nail. And that's how I would describe uh, Claire. You know, we've seen her in two fully locked in rear naked chokes as the time expired. And she looked like she was gonna die in either one. You know, like she was not gonna tap and, unless she was going to sleep. And she's been attacking uh, the legs today really well. She already finds herself in 50-50 uh, against Emily. You see Emily trying to, to latch on. She's just trying to control the arms. So Emily Cyanide Hauser uh, with the bun on top position. Uh, her name is Cyanide. Uh, she goes, she's a blue belt out of combat performance at Hendersonville, North Carolina. She actually teaches an 8 to 13 year old uh, all female class called the Little Cyanides. Uh, she just came back from competing with uh, Team USA Grappling in Spain uh, and she was fundraising for that. And so uh, one of her favorite memories from there is that uh, her, her students, these, these young ladies, uh, gave her a envelope of, of money, Aww. $27, Aww. that they knew couldn't get her there, but they wanted her to have a souvenir from the Little Cyanides. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> She was telling me earlier today, you know, her, her team has just been watching all these matches and just, you know, jumping up and cheering. So that's a, oh, good. yeah, a really positive influence. Another, another one of our sponsors, myfighterpage.com. So um, a friend of ours, Mark McEthron, is going to, whoever is the ladies champ and the men's champ, he's going to build a custom website for these guys, an $8,000 uh, value. So you guys go visit myfighterpage.com. Uh, they've been in the 50-50 for pretty much the whole match. Neither has come close with an attack. Got some of that leg spaghetti. Yeah. Well, I consider it leg spaghetti when they're changing positions a bunch. When it's static like this, I just... Nah, it's just a leg. It's just leg battle. But when they're just okay. like legs are flying all over the place, they're pummeling, they're changing positions. That's when it becomes leg spaghetti. Uh huh. PGF season four brought to you by Subversive Tier A Production Concert Quality Sound Lights Lasers, and they have flames as well. Attacking the top leg, nothing there. Trying to use that though to expose the heel. You see Emily holding on to the head. Nice job by Emily. She's grabbing control, she felt Claire trying to get a bite. So Claire was an at-large bid out of the Decatur qualifier, and Emily Cyanide Hauser won the Chattanooga qualifier. One of our team sponsors, Ironclad. Visit ironcladmethods.com for help with your wrestling. Wrestling for BJJ. She lost the heel. We spent three and a half minutes here. Just about two minutes left in the match. I mean, much to Claire's credit, she's been attacking the whole match. Yeah, 50-50 battles are not the most exciting, <laughs> you know. Um, we've been here for Almost five minutes. So Claire got here pretty early. 
Um, she came close one time to getting a grip, but Emily's done a great job of, of controlling posture and just controlling the hands. And that's one of the, like, 50-50 is really tough to escape, but it allows your opponent because there's not um, a wedge, really, uh, a frame in between them that they can just grab your hands and they can fight the grips off. One minute remaining. Claire definitely winning this battle from 50-50, though. She's had the better attacks. Um, but they got 50 seconds left. And this is looking like it's also going to go to a draw. So I have a question, though. So Claire is attacking um, Cyanide's right leg there, or right foot. But she doesn't have any hip control on that right leg. So is she going to be able to submit on that leg? Almost a big mistake by Claire trying to stack in and leaving uh, her foot behind. Um, but yeah, no, that's an interesting question, Lindsay. And we've seen people, uh, there's one match in particular that happened at the Onnit Invitational between Quentin Rosenzweig and Kyle Bain, where Quentin got an Aoki lock on okay. the free leg. And okay. it was disgusting. I mean, Kyle, like, it was one of those violent taps I've ever seen. Yeah. And so you can, but I, I wonder if the, the ladies have the horsepower. Mm. They're also super flexible as well. This match will end in a draw. Yo! All right, so we see Emily Hauser is going to end with, because she's done, she has Brianna next. So she's going to end with two points on the season. Come on down. Uh, since you won't be able to get the next match with Brianna, I figured I'd go ahead and bring you out here right now. I'll give you a chance to speak to the crowd, say anything to the people that you want back at home. You battled hard all week. We're really proud to have you here at the PGF. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, I want to give a shout out to all my girls watching at home. I teach a kids class. They're all watching. I really, really appreciate them. Um, I want to say thank you to Brandon. Where's Brandon at? In the shadows. In the shadows. Brandon! I'm coming back next season. We're giving the people what they want. We're getting Tara LaRosa signed at match number three. That's what we're doing next season. All right. Thank you so much. Oh, I want to give a thank you to my sponsor, uh, Movement for Life Physical Therapy. They kept me healthy and uh, really happy to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Emily. Great job. Take a second to speak to Miss Claire Mitchell here. One of my new favorites in the PGF, at least. See if we can get a little bit of information from you here. That was a tough battle. It looked like you had what you wanted a few times, but, but she was pretty tough in battling. You got one more match left. What can we expect? Well, before we talk about that match, I would like to talk to Tara, and I would like to talk to Brandon. I don't know where you are. I don't know where either of you are, but it doesn't matter. You'll hear me. To him right now. So I was reading Tara's Wikipedia last night. Pro tip, don't do that if you know you have to fight Tara. But... <laughs> We have the same birthday, except 25 years apart, but the same birthday. So, Brandon, I don't know where you are, but Tara and I need like a joint PGF birthday party. All you PGF people can come, we can fight each other, I can try to leg lock her, she can squeeze my neck or do whatever she does. I don't know what that is. Um, but we can do it with no ill intent in our hearts, it'll be a nice fun time. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. <laughs> except, one more thing. Tara, if this happens, please leave your steroids at home. I like my endocrine system the way it is. Okay, Claire. Well, thank you for that. We'll see you back out here just a little bit. Okay. I think we need to give Claire the microphone more. Yeah. Uh, that was something. Uh, so now we're uh, about to have a love it. quintet. I love it. Her and Rock Troll start podcast. <laughs> yes. That would be the best podcast ever. Claire and the right, Rock Troll. Right now, yes. <laughs> All right, first up, for Team Such and Such. Okay, Team Such and Such, Sam Akerd. And for Team Cantrell, Matthew Boyles. Oh, I love this matchup. A little Georgia, two Georgia boys, I should say, come into the stage. We got Sam Accord, a purple belt, uh, training out 10th Planet in Atlanta. And then we've got our 
one of our favorite guys, Matthew Boyles, out of Scramble BJJ. It's funny because yesterday somebody said that Sam Akert couldn't couldn't wrestle him, and he's like, wait, that's one thing I can definitely do. He was all state uh, in wrestling. All state. I, I think they just question him because he's bringing pretty boy jujitsu uh, to the mats. <laughs> it's just assumed. Pretty boys can't wrestle, you know what I'm saying? That's just assumed. Obviously not true in Sam's case. But sometimes, you know, you judge a book by its cover and you find out after you're suplexed on your head. <laughs> but, man, both these guys, um, Sam didn't get an opportunity to have a match in the last one. Team won comfortably, so we're going to see him and then Eric Longar, and then I'll be very interested to see the order that is picked by Sean Applegate because, oh, okay. On the head, Matthew Boyles. On the head and arm. Oh, man. Nice work by Sam, but. But yeah, I'm gonna be really interested to see Sean's order after this because yeah, he's got a couple guys in right now, but if they don't score, they're in danger. Reese at 19 is, should feel pretty comfortable, but if I was him, I'd want some insurance points. And it's never, it's never safe to make an assumption about a BJJ guy. Like, you can't look at him and go, oh, that's a pretty boy. He's not good at something. Or, oh, he's real skinny. <laughs> I can beat him, no problem. That is not true. Uh, he's going to take your girl and your manhood. <laughs> the most assuming, <laughs> unassuming guys are often killers. Yep. It's going to be a bad day. See a guy like that that can flip his hair and can wrestle? <laughs> That sounds like handsome Kevin to me. I mean, if I had to bet, I have to think that Manning Leverett is going to come out after Eric Longer uh, because he, he's at sixth place with 16, and that's that's too, too precarious a position. Yeah, you have to think strategically now as a coach, especially since like Matt Elkins' team has clearly won. Um, so like a guy like Stephen Dana, you just leave him like, hey, like. We're going to put you in the end because he just doesn't really mathematically have a chance. I mean, he'd he have to take out a whole team. Which, I mean, he's got firepower. But I, I mean, he ain't taking out a whole team. Nobody is this week. Nobody's done it. No. The closest we've seen is Maximus taking out three guys. <laughs> Handsome Kevin in the chat he says, Sam, stealing my hair flip, copying my whole effing flow. <laughs> That's what happens when you're amazing. You get some impersonators. Look, I'm saying that that's the assumption. I'm saying I know pretty boys that can wrestle. I'm just saying <laughs> oh, a lot of people are going to find out. Now, in Kevin Cheryl's Saturday. case, well, in Kevin Cheryl's case, he's got the ears. So that's the uh, dead okay. giveaway. So everybody knows. But Sam, I don't. he's only got the ears. Got some scramble fire going on on the stage. Ooh, we've got a triangle. <laughs> Boyle's best move. Now, this is a reverse triangle. He's looking to attack the arm. Just under two and a half minutes left. I want to send a thank you to Such and Such, one of our sponsors and team sponsors. If you're in town, Go visit such and such. Get some drunken waffle fries. Oh, Sam just sitting on the face. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Don't unlock it. He unlocked it and tried to switch, but nah, you can't do that from this position. This would be a weird time to join the broadcast, especially if you didn't know <laughs> what you were <laughs> what watching. You're just, you know, Brandon's got over 100,000 people following. I'm right, sure some let's of go those check are, it out. I'm sure uh, some of those happening? are kind of weird. You know, like they don't know. They're just following random YouTube channels, and they pulled up right now. They'd be like, dude, they'd either be really into this or really not. Right. Nice work by Sam. Sam Accord just staying alive in there. I don't think he's any real danger just yet. Yeah, you see he's trying to fight that free leg, um, the leg that's not triangled. He's got to get that lock uh, separated. I mean, we have one minute left, and both these gentlemen need need a submission to, to keep their hopes alive. I, I think both these guys are done. 
just looking at the talent on both teams, like they're not going to run through a hole. Like they would need to get like three or four taps in a row. And while both these guys are super exciting, I just don't think it's going to happen. So you think you just go for the moral victory and, you know, worst case and just draw out here? Nah, I mean, you see, uh, you see Boyle's trying. He just, he's not going to finish that. Oh, that was a good adjustment. He's going to be looking for this Kimura. He's trying to get the hands unclasped. He's got 15 seconds. Oh, it's not enough time. It's not enough time. Now he's trying to finish the try. Oh, oh man! Don't he keeps switching his legs? Ah. Ah. All right. So handsome Kevin Sherrill's trying to get $500. He wants to defend his belt twice. This match will finish in a draw. <laughs> hey, let me let me get you guys out here individually when you get done. Womp, 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 super chat from Kai Johnson, Sam, you can two be first, pounds. Since you're done first. My man, thank you for putting it down this week. I'm not sure what the points look like. That was a tough scrap. Not, that's okay. Hey, that's all right. We can't all. Next season. Yeah. Next season. Tell me what you're going to do. You tell me. <laughs> Next season. And then I really want a pretty boy, boy bell for these smaller boys. Okay. The problem is all the 55s are kind of ugly. <laughs> that's fair. So. That's fair. Somebody's going to have to come out of somewhere. We'll, we'll have to drag drag up somebody somehow, but it's gonna be fine. Some tough to find a 55er that could compete with you for that. I know. I'm just. Well, we appreciate your work. Wait, you're right, but they won't. We appreciate your work, man. You. See you back next season, hopefully. Thank you, Mr. Boyles. Another one. You bring it every single time. It's a barn burner every time you step on the match, man. There's no there's no question that you got heart and toughness, man. Is there anything you need to say? There is something I want to say. I want a rematch with Steven Dana. Let's get the super chat pumped up, baby. Get 300 bucks in there so me and Steven Dana can run it back on the finale tomorrow. Let's do it, baby. Hey, let's get this money, man. Good job. It's 500, though. <laughs> that's, that's Georgia math. <laughs> well, I think Brandon initially might have said something about $300, but the ending total for a match tomorrow with 500. And inflation's a real thing. Oh, um, owning your own business, I feel that inflation. <laughs> you know, I know that um, Matthew Boyles did not get the results he wanted for this season, but you, you gotta think that the, the improvements he's shown. Uh, Absolutely, and he just, he came over the other day and he was like, I'm having a blast. Cause you know, he didn't get to compete in that season. He was just an alternate. He got to do the battle Rama, but he's like, oh, I love this season. He's he's having an awesome time. That's right. He, he got to be a replacement for like one match in the regular season then had a battle Rama, but uh, we're about to have the, the next people announced. Up next from Team Cantrell, we have the man tied for second place, Samson Famabout, and his opponent from Team Such and Such, Eric Longer. Look, here's the thing about the Super Chats. We don't care. I mean, we would like to see. We would like to see, uh, you know, those guys fight, but they've already fought. Like, that's, like, for them. They're trying to get something going. You know, we take zero of the money, so that's just a reminder. And a uh, womp, womp, so. womp Super Chat from Elijah Carlton. He says, 20 to anyone that doesn't suck at jujitsu. So I'm going to be taking that and putting it in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> So wait, is Elijah going to determine? Is he just going to like let us know? No, he said to anyone, and that's me. Lindsay made the call. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's a boss level move right there. <laughs> so Eric Longer in the black shorts on bottom. Samson from about in the blue shorts on top. Samson's out of Sierra MMA in Utah. And Eric Longer is uh, the uh, black belt gym owner of 10th Planet uh, Crystal City. I think we, we've heard some, uh, we've seen everybody improve on the mic throughout the week, right? Yeah. But was that not the biggest diss that we've heard this season? <laughs> Calling out everybody and just saying, hey, there ain't no, there ain't nobody that's even halfway decent looking in this one for the I don't know. Season. Claire just let us know that she's 25 young <laughs> years younger than Tara. Well, she also <laughs> brought up steroids. <laughs> yeah. So that, that was a pretty big diss, I think. Yeah. Her, name, her name's Claire. We call her Double Down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. All right.
right. So see, we'll see, Elijah, Elijah approved the 20. <laughs> going to me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, okay. We got Eric Longart locking up a Dars. We got 4.15 left on the clock. He's so tough. Nice, nice attack by Eric Longart. Oh! And you know Eric wants that submission. He hasn't scored one yet this season. Nice counter. And he gets the tap. Beautiful work by Samson. Shows off the defense right there, survives the Dars choke right into offense. Uh, really nice work by Samson. And your winner by submission, Samson Fumabout. <laughs> Samson, you just went out, made a statement, put yourself up in second place. Uh, how you feeling? Man, that was good. Uh, man, that little scrammy mother freaker. <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, little dude's good, a little scrapper, but... Uh, Man, he, he was tied on that choke, but I held it in. It was awesome. Uh, got out, took heart. I was like, fuck that, Maximus. I'm taking the second place, you know? <laughs> How important is it to you to be the PGF champion? Oh, man, it's going to be the most important thing. You know, this, this whole PGF, man, the community, the, everything, it's awesome. So I want to be that champion right there. All right, man, great work. We'll see you back out in just a second, brother. Eric. What's up, dude? A tough week out here, man. But listen, it wouldn't be the PGF without you here like this, man. You've represented. You're a veteran. Uh, we love you here. We appreciate you. Is there anything you want to say to the people? One day I'll get good at this competing thing. I'll figure it out. Get out hey, man. It, it takes two, you know, and we appreciate you coming out here every time and putting your heart on the line for us. And I appreciate your work. Thank you. <laughs> Huge shout out to True Wear at True Wear. Check them out on Instagram. They bridge the divide between comfort and class. Give them, yeah, oh. give them your patronage. Check them out on Instagram. Hey, don't sleep on Elijah as a coach. He's uh, really turning himself into a good one. He's got some phenomenal, um, just one minute just clips on his Instagram where he's coaching through a bunch of different things that he does. And yeah, don't sleep on, don't sleep on my man. <laughs> now his team could be a little dysfunctional. It might be. Are we ready for the next announcement? All right, for Team Cantrell, they are gonna replace Samson with Anthony Molina Valdez. <laughs> and his opponent from Team Such as Such, Steven Dana. Getting the three points and walking off. Uh, we're going to see that from a lot of guys. Oh, you have to think he probably was not going to, you know, be able to surpass Dane Lee points-wise. And so, you know, smarter to stay healthy, you know, stay fresher for tomorrow, uh, you know, and, and hopefully get that you know, additional match with Dane Lee and, and get a win from him. I know he's looking forward to that. Womp, 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 super chat from Diabolical. One hundred dollars going to Coach Dane. Fifty seconds in, I think we're going to see a lot of leg attacks. Both guys um, have shown that that's their preferred way. I mean, in his last match, Stephen Dana passed, mounted, really controlled Mario, but we see that uh, we're going to see some, this is leg spaghetti. You see how the legs are going everywhere? Everywhere. So Anthony Molina Valdez, 10th Planet Miami, brown belt, uh, has the longer hair there. Uh, Steven Dana, 10th Planet Atlanta, uh, purple belt, uh, with the uh, black rash guard with white uh, script. Uh, Kiai, was that your rash guard that you designed that Eric's wearing?
almost to the four minute mark. Neither guy able to establish a, a position. So both of these gentlemen need uh, a succession of submissions. Anthony Molina Valdez uh, currently in 11th place with eight points. Steven Dana in 14th place with four points. Uh, if either of them want to have a chance of making the, the finale, they need to get a, a, a few different submissions here in a row. Yeah, I, I think both these guys are, are pretty much done. Um, both very talented, but didn't have the seasons they were expecting. I, I, I was looking at both these guys as guys that were, uh, especially Anthony. I, I thought Anthony was going to be a lock for, for the tournament. And, yeah, I think both these guys are uh, – they're not going to be in uh, Saturday's eight man. And it's crazy. You just happened like that. Like, so Dane Lee, season three. Yeah. Uh, he came in, and, and I, I figured he was going to be in the top three, and he didn't make the playoffs. And now you know, Anthony Molina, I, I know the commissioner was saying that if he was drafting, he would have been his first-round pick or, or up there. Yeah, he was the, of the five guys. Um, I, I would have taken Nakaya first, just obviously she's my student, so sure, like, I'm sure. going to take Nakaya first. And that would have been a good pick. <laughs> but I was looking at, you know, Anthony as a guy, potentially as my you know, first male off the board. And just what Kamoi did. It shows, though, because we've had a bunch of guys uh, perform well at some of these nationally, like, sub-only tournaments. You know, he's done very well at multiple finishers events and some other uh, pro sub-only events. And if you come to the PGF, this is a grind, and there's a lot of tough dudes. There's always a lot of tough dudes. Is Dane done for the day? Nah, no. I imagine. I imagine he's not going to do the last one. Oh, you think he'll sit out? I, he just has no – there's no reason. Womp, 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 super chat from Mike Amos. $45 drinks for the announcer's table. You, sir, are a gentleman and a scholar. <laughs> get that Snoop Dogg wine. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Egghead was thinking. Uh, well, either a, a nice single uh, malt scotch or maybe a double IPA. No, That's some not Snoop, Snoop Dogg again. wine. <laughs> Wow. Well, I mean, I understand. If you haven't had it before. Right. <laughs> <laughs> nice entry, but neither guy. I mean, both guys are just so good at legs. They're both guys just countering each other left and right. Steven was kind of leading the advance at the beginning. Now we're starting to see Anthony. Big shout out to Dr. Michael Cantrell, an orthopedic surgeon in Huntsville. He trains at 10th Planet Huntsville. He trains with us at 10th Planet Decatur. If you're in need of an orthopedic surgeon, reach out to Dr. Michael Cantrell. Um, I want to say one thing that I absolutely love this format for a reason. One, you know, a bunch of you get a bunch of different matches, so you get to see people over the course of um, you know a bunch of days, and they get to they get to improve. You know, we saw that uh, with with a handful of these guys. I mean, Alex Hall's a great example. First day, zero points. Second day, finds himself in the top eight. But also, I don't like, like, it takes all the judges out. It mm -hmm. takes all the EBI overtimes and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It draws a loss. And you can Whoa. have a great match. Uh-oh. Man, Steven getting salty over here. <clears throat> I got 10 seconds. Five. Yeah, it just takes all of that out. <laughs> well, the saltiness all of a sudden uh, just all smiles while Stephen Dan. Well, it's funny. It's funny just to watch that, people get like super salty and do like color ties and then just sit. Stephen, come on up here, <laughs> <laughs> sit, down, sit down for me. That way the people can see you up here, man. Strong work this week. Probably didn't get the results that you were looking for, man. But, hey, that, that's part of the growth process sometimes for some of us. Uh, is there anything you want to say? Matthew Boyles, where you at? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't get beat up taking my microphone. Somebody better get this man. Anthony, don't do what he just did or I'll slam you. 
But come and talk to me for a second, though, please. How you feeling after that match, man? I'm pretty upset that I didn't get enough points to get to the finals, but I did cool shit. And, uh, you, know, just, you know, now it's time to just watch those matches, drill the shit that I know I'm missing. And, uh, yeah, next time. No, man, you did do a lot of cool stuff. You brought a really great energy to this season. It would definitely not have been the same without you. Uh, disappointing not getting to the playoffs, but I appreciate you coming in here and making it fun for at least me, man. Thank you. For sure, brother. Our two first, like, really good grapplers that aren't going to be in the, the A-man. Okay. And, and as Stephen Aiken said, he, he brought great jujitsu, beautiful jujitsu. Uh, I mean, again, his, his match against Reese LeFever, putting him in peril multiple times. There's some really slick stuff there. And we're ready for the next match. All right, for our next match, we'll have from Team Cantrell, Charles Muxo, and from Team Such and Such, Manning Leverett. So we see Manning Leverett on the mats in the white rash guard. Uh, yeah. he's, he's currently in sixth place with 16 points. And you have to think, he, he needs to get another submission to, be, to feel safe. A hundred percent. There's too many he guys. He is not safe here. Mm -hmm. Now, 16 could get you in, but you're not <laughs> safe. You're gonna, he's going to be a oh, nice entry, reverse entry to cross Ashi. Uses that to pass and uh, or uses it to take the top position. So, Chaz Muxo in the PGF rash guard on bottom of uh, black tie Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Cape Coral, Florida. Nice back take. Right into the rear naked. Does he have it locked up? I can't see. Okay, no, he's fighting. But he's got the body triangle. Manning, uh, this is one of his best attack positions. And he's got five minutes to work. Oh, yeah. A choke right here. He's in. He's got the arm trapped. Chess is tough, but it's probably a matter of time. Yeah, I mean, 125. Manning cut some weight. So there's probably a 40 pound difference here. I, I bet Manning's probably 165, 167 right now. You're very right. I mean, you're looking at one of our bigger competitors against you know, uh, the, very much the smallest. Yeah, I mean, he did very well at 170. He was second uh, place in, in the regular season at 170. Oh, and man. Here it is. Sorry to interrupt you, but he's got to get in the tap. Oh, okay, my bad. Chaz just keeps showing resilience. He's, he's not making it easy on anyone. Oh. All right, he gets the six points. And you're worried about submission. Uh, yeah. It was a neck crank, but we count the neck cranks from the RNC. S6. Uh, Charles, come talk to me for a second. Do an interview. Yeah, man. Come on. Tough week for you out here, man. Uh, I think if there was a PGF 135 season, you'd probably be one of the main contenders for that. It looks like everybody's a little bit bigger than you. I'm sure there's no excuses from you. You brought a lot of game. Is there anything you want to say to the people at home? Um, just shout out to my team at Black Tie. Uh, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be half as tough as I am with all these big guys. <laughs> but, yeah. Cool, man. Well, we definitely appreciate you. And we need that 135 PGF. For all you little guys out there watching, we can still do it. Come on. Let's bring some little guys out here. All right, Charles. Thank you so much, man, for your work, dude. Those are supernatural survival gear shorts. You can buy those on SupernaturalSurvivalGear.com. Okay, staying on for such and such. We'll be Manning Leverett for Team Cantrell. We're going to have Juan Martinez. I think Charles can make a 125. No, he is. He weighed 125. That's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Thank you. Yeah, we saw that neck crank last uh, in the last match by Manning. And I wonder what the strategy is here. 
Manning, he's in. He's in the tournament. He's got 22 points. Unless something just absolutely insane happened. But Juan needs this victory. He's in, he's, he's in ninth place. He's the first person out. Mm. Oh. Juan Martinez the fifth in the black rash guard out of Childress BJJ in Pueblo, Colorado. He's a brown belt and head instructor there. He's been one of the most fun guys to watch all week. I've he's one of my like there's a couple people that stand out just because I wasn't really aware of him. Like I, I'd seen Anthony Molina a lot, I'd seen Reese a lot, uh, but he's a guy I was completely unaware of, and he has just impressed the crap out of me. <laughs> yeah, he showed some flashes in the Nashville qualifier, then he went to the Atlanta qualifier. Of course, we, we didn't have that video, uh, but uh, everything you've seen, well, we've seen what he can do on these mats right here. Yeah, and I, I bet uh, I bet he's pretty happy with his performance. Um, I, I feel like he hasn't left too many points out there. But a win right here, just giving himself a chance to make the playoffs would be huge. He finds himself on top. Ooh. Oh, nice work. You see, he's trying to get control of the wrist. Manning doing a good job, though. You see, he's walking, changing the angle. Mm. Just under four minutes. You guys check out myfighterpage.com. They have um, custom websites. They will build a website for you with a merch store, social media marketing, and a sponsor page. And the top lady and the top gentleman will receive a website built for them at an $8,000 value. you got to wonder. I know, man. Oh, that's it. He's locked it up. He's He's going to finish. Oh, my. And your winner by submission, Juan Martinez. If I'm Manning's coach, I'm going just tap. You're already in. Like, don't risk any injury for tomorrow. All right, Juan, that was a big win. Manning's a really tough guy. Uh, you got him out there with six points. Is that enough going to be? Is that going to be enough to get you in the playoffs? I'm not sure. I hope so, but we'll see. Get another six, and that'll put you in there, right? Yep, right on. What is that? What's that? This six points puts you up in the eighth place right there, Juan. Mm -hmm. How's that make you feel? Good. That feels good. Awesome. Cool, man. We'll see you up here for this next one. He's actually tied for fourth with Reese LaFever right now. And we're going to see Reese. Man, that was quick. I guess that movement was really nice. Staying on for Team Cantrell will be Juan Martinez, his opponent for Team Such and Such, Reese Lefevre. It's a big match right here. Make noise, yes. Because 19, like I said, I think Very Reese good. is going to be in, but you don't know. Because um, Manning pops over. So Manning's at uh, 22 points. So Reese and, um, and Juan are actually tied for fifth place. So if neither of these guys uh, score, they're going to really be watching Alex Hall, David Garcia, Evan DeWitt. So a finish here, one of these guys, oh, basically secure one of these guys makes it. Womp, 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 super chat from Tyler going to Evan DeWitt. Evan DeWitt is a beast. Oh, this is weird. He's going for like a weird go go plata. Huh. That was interesting. All right, you got to think about crucifix entries right here if you're one. Got to watch it. Yeah. Okay, it turns into a double stack. It's got to be careful wrapping up. I know Reese is thinking about crucifix. Yeah. He's going for it. Oh, what a crucifix entry. Nice. Juan, he's trying.
kind of, you know, you got to get your, you got to free your, your shoulder. Once the shoulder slips, the elbow will follow. Reese doing a good job. He's switching to a Kimura grip. That Kimura is going to give him a little bit extra control until he can, yeah, he's using that Kimura grip well. Four and a half minutes. <laughs> what an entry. Oh man, I see. We got Brad Schneider in the comments. Brad is an incredible practitioner and he's super slick with the crucifixes. So if he says he says it's slick, <laughs> then it gets the gets the stamp of approval. We saw Reese finish a gnarly crucifix um, two days ago. Last match in day one. And he was talking about it like he got in the chat yesterday was like, nah, it's going to be crucifix day today. Didn't turn that way, uh, turn out that way, but he's working now. He's just trying to dig underneath the chin. Huge shout out to Amanda Sharon Realty. Thank you for buying these beautiful PGF belts that we will see tomorrow. Yeah, the belts are sick. and I can't wait for you guys to see the, uh, the handsome daddy belt for <laughs> for our handsome weight title. Travis Thomas versus Kevin Sherrill for the handsome weight title tomorrow. You guys make sure and tune in tomorrow at noon. It will not be on this channel, but there is a pay-per-view link if you go to pgfhome.com. It, it will start at noon central. Nice escape by Juan. Both these guys at 19 points, fifth place. I think it's good enough. It's going to be good enough to, to get both of them into the postseason. But, man, a win here would be huge for either Reese or Juan. So, fans, stay tuned. At the end of block six, the female 135-pound champion will be crowned. They will receive their belt. Okay. So they're belting today, the ladies. Gotcha. I just didn't know if they were going to do a presentation tomorrow. Maybe represent? Maybe. Two minutes and 15 seconds. Reese coming over top of the guard into the front headlock position. He's got a really nasty anaconda. Nice job by Juan. a lot of good guys this season. It's been so competitive. Dars, or no, he's got the vice grips. He's going to be looking to either transition to a Dars, a fully locked Dars, or maybe a back take. Do we know if there's going to be a tiebreaker? Like if, the, if somebody has the same amount of points for like eighth place? I have no clue. <laughs> there will have to be, we're hearing from the production staff, there will be some sort of tiebreaker. Okay. Un unknown what it is yet. He's locking it up. He's not quite deep enough. Oh. He's on the bicep and he pulls to the mount position. Or excuse me, he transitions into the mounted Dars. It's 30 seconds. Nope. And he gets the tap. And your winner by submission, Reese LaFever. Well, Reese is in. So all you Reese LaFever fans, he will be in our eight-man uh, tournament tomorrow. To okay. Uh, ready? 
I just received word from Coach Kumoy Anderson of Team Cantrell that Noah Randolph is injured, and therefore we will not have another match from this queen, team quintet. That is it for the, uh, for the remainder of the team. So we'll move on to our next ladies match. He's out. He's injured. So he'll get two points. Race he'll line. get the two no, no. points for that. For the walkover on the injury. Uh, we hope Noah recovers. Uh, PGF fan favorite. So tough times. Uh, also, Emily Hauser will get two points for her win in the next match against Brianna Parocha. So we're going we're gonna to wrap it up right here with this one with from, t from team such and such, Claire Mitchell. From Team Cantrell, Joani Chamberlain. What was the sub that Reese got on one? Um, so Reese got uh, Dars. Oh, I thought you said match one. <laughs> said Sorry, one. <laughs> one. <laughs> All right, I'm uh, excited for this match. Claire, I, I, I hope she doesn't put herself in too much danger to, like, try and stay undefeated, you know, or, like, not having not been submitted. Well. Uh, Joani's a beast. Um, Joani is going to finish second in our eight women's uh, PGF season four under 135 pound. Um, she's looked good, man. Jo both these girls have, have, done, have done well. I think Joani underperformed on day one which put her in this spot um, where she's going to end up in second place. I think she left some points on the board. Claire has, I, I think, outperformed I think, what most people were expecting. You can obviously hear from some of her uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> interviews, you know, she was salty by that. And she made a statement. That's what's really cool about competing and, and just putting yourself out there is like, yeah, you can, you can show what you're made of and, and prove people wrong. Yeah, and I think that a lot of people do that with the PGF as they kind of go in slow and just like testing the waters on day one, but you really can't do that. You can't leave those points behind. Yeah, and this looks a lot like their first match. Um, Claire, just very defensive. She's been so hard to open up. We saw Anna Kanaj and Nakia Jackson uh, with rear naked chokes as the time expired, but... Other than that, I mean, she's been she's been really tough. I mean, nobody has scored a point on her. Keeping up with Jones, the Lonnie Jones podcast adventure. Uh, stories from a licensed professional counselor. He's a minister. He's uh, the SWAT team chaplain, outdoor enthusiast, 10th Planet Purple Belt. Guys, check that out. Keeping up with Jones, the Lonnie Jones podcast adventure. So we saw the uh, – and Johnny <laughs> – one of her other matches where she mounted and she's going to look to take the back. But you can see, I mean, Claire's just keeping those hands, trying to keep them glued to her chest. joanny has got an underhook. It's not a strong underhook yet. For she's it to be creeping a it up, yeah, though. Yeah, she is. Yeah, this is kind of what I expected from Claire. Like, she's going to hold on mm -hmm. tooth and nail to not get submitted. And so I figured it was going to be really tough. Even if Jawani like, needed a sub to, like, end up in first, I, I thought this one. would be a really tough one to get it from. As you can see, Claire's like, nah, I ain't opening up for nothing. <laughs> Which doesn't make for the most exciting match to watch. No. <laughs> but Sean, in his interview over there, was um, very complimentary of Claire and, and how well he he thought that she had been doing this season. Very tough competitor. He was proud to have her on his team. Yeah, she, she fought uh, like a lion. I mean, tooth and nail to uh, the very end with all these girls. Like I said, I mean, she was in fully locked rear naked chokes with you know, like 10 seconds left. Mm -hmm. And she just, just ate it, you know. She was going to go to sleep before she tapped. Truewear is another one of our sponsors. Check them out on Instagram, at Truewear, T-R-U-W-E-A-R, soft-styled shirts and pants for men and women. Highest quality production done domestically. Yeah, this is looking like a draw. It's got draw written all over it. Um, 
Jelani hasn't been able to gain an inch since she's taken them out. And that's what's really tough. Like I tell people, like learning to survive, and Claire's got good survival skills. Um, it's one of the most important first steps in when you're starting to like learn jujitsu is you got to learn to survive. Absolutely. But um, at the same time, you know, there's a time and place to, to survive. And right. Um, well, we're on a show. We want to see you open up a little bit. <laughs> right. If you're not competing, then, you you know, you usually spend like the first couple of years, two, three years, just learning defense and protecting yourself. Purple belt is where you should be working on offensive um, strings, offensive strategies, stringing together techniques. So Joanny's in the, the, the blue spats. Uh, just a little shout out to her as far as uh, she's the owner of Rise Up BJJ in Kennesaw, Georgia. Just had a grand reopening uh, a few weeks ago. Yeah, Joanny's a phenomenal black belt, one of the best ladies in the country. She did very well um, at Medusa this past weekend. Mm -hmm. Pretty active it. competitor. Yeah, lost in the first round to a really tough Aislinn O'Connell. Aislinn was the 135-pound uh, Medusa CJJ champion, taking out Fatima in the finals. Whoa. And Joanny had um, – had uh, Aislinn mounted, like she ain't finished mounted, like she really controlled that match, lost in overtime. And now we see an ultra Kimura attempt. Well, I guess she doesn't quite have the Kimura grip. 40 so seconds. She's looking more for like a Barato Plata style. And this is what I'm talking about. I hope Claire doesn't. Oh yeah. Oh, man, it's like a Tariko Plata. This is exactly what we saw from uh, Miss Davis, Kata, in all of her matches. Six seconds. Oh, my gosh, she's so tough. This match finishes in a draw. Again, I'll, I'll interview both of you guys if that's okay. Joanna, you can be first, ma'am. Tough week battling it out hard with these ladies. Um, man, I appreciate all the hard work you put in. Is there anything you want to say? No. This has been awesome, guys. Thank you. We I'm appreciate it. Breathe. Okay. Well, we appreciate you. Thank you. Um, Claire. Definitely made a name for yourself this week. You battled hard cut some of the best promos of any PGF season so far. I'm just going to pass this over to you. Is there anything you want to say? Uh, yeah, I have a few apologies. So first of all, I'm sorry to my mom. She told me not to say anything about Tara, but I did. Sorry about that. Um, second of all, sorry to all of you guys watching. I offered to fight my teammates' matches for her today since she's injured, but that's just not in the rules. So whatever, maybe that'll change next season. And finally, sorry to all you fantasy team owners again. I kind of forgot how to lose this week. That messed things up for you. So I'm 19. I'm a purple belt. I was supposed to lose every match, but I'm out here. I'm undefeated in the PGF, and I'll be back. <laughs> Is there anything else for the haters? I mean, I don't know that I have haters now. They're all fans. That's right, and that's how <laughs> it's done. Thank you, Claire. I love it. That's Man, awesome. And I got note a few minutes ago that Reese LaFever moved into second place after that last match. So now Reese is in second place after that last match. <laughs> Man, Claire, cutting some crazy promos. Man, that was awesome. And what a gangster. Wanting to do her teammates' matches. I'm, fine. I'm yeah. trying to find ways to not. Do that. I'm like, no, no, no. Who wants to take my spot? <laughs> right. team, team points. I'm sorry. No, I'm telling you, when I was at EBI Absolutes, coaching Nakai the day before Medusa, people were coming to me and like, hey, are you excited to do EBI Absolute tomorrow? And I was like, you uh, talking to me? <laughs> How did you think I'm so in it? Such and such had 14. <laughs> Cantrell had 11. So such and such won 14 to 11. I'm saying no. such, and, such and such won 14 to 11 over Cantrell. Uh, in that duel. Dude, can you imagine somebody drops out and they're like, Scaff, do you want to jump in? We need somebody to fight Nikki Rod. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but how 
crazy has today been? I mean, the, the numbers and the rankings just keep changing every other minute. Um, yeah, but, I, I mean, let's say that the coaches would have picked different people to compete. These rankings would be – would they be completely different, do you think? Maybe a little bit, or would they just be completely different? Like, if the coaches would have picked – different lineups well, or different uh, competitors to go against each other. Let's look at an example. I mean, Alex Hall, right? Mm -hmm. So he had zero points the first day. Yeah. Then all of a sudden he gets 15 points and he shoots up the rankings into, mm -hmm. you know, the, the mid uh, to, to middle of the pack getting to the finale. He hasn't, we have not seen him on the mat today mm -hmm. at all yet. Yeah. And, and so now he's dropped down to eighth position uh, right on that bubble. Uh, right next to him, Evan DeWitt, that was safely uh, in the middle of the pack uh, for the finale at the beginning of today, uh, and now he's the first person outside looking in. So dynamic. What do you guys think about losing a point for a draw? Huh? Like, so if you lose, nothing happens, but if you draw, both competitors lose a point. Mm. Well, what it. if you don't have any points? You get negative. You're going, you're going into negatives? Yeah. Ma'am. Ooh. I love it. I, that's definitely more of a consequence. For sure. Yeah, let's try to get our team supernatural and ironclad ready to go. You, supernatural will be up first. Even if it's um, two competitors like going at it and it's super close, like, I saw a negative one. I don't know. I don't know if I like that idea. I mean, honestly, all the matches were, were awesome. Um, it's real tough, though, because, like, you know, essentially you're trying to get after kind of a snooze fest, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but, but then you add subjectivity to it. It's a regular season today, okay? okay. We're ready to come up with our next duel. Ready? All right. It is our final team matchup of the season. Coming out first, representing Supernatural Survival Gear, Coach Caleb McAllister. <laughs> Athletes include Anna Kanaj, Dane Leak, Mario Gayor, Billy Baxter, Jacob Arp, Jacob Mashburn, Nathan Chambers, and Tara LaRosa. Ever since my eyes met the world, I was breaking through the chains like a match to a flame. I was born against the grain. Oh, oh. they say I'm broken in the brain. Got a and their opponents making their way to the stage next, representing Ironclad. Head coach, Matt Elkins. Team members include Nakaya Jackson, David Garcia, Alex Hall, Evan DeWitt, Nick Saff, TJ Steinbach, Wesley Carter, and Kada Davis. And we are ready for our first matchup from Supernatural Survival Gear, Anna Kanaj, and from Team Ironclad, Hokage, Nakaya Jackson. Well, and I know this is a match that uh, Anna was wanting to run back because she, was she wasn't happy with how she performed against Nakaya in that first match. Okay. So I'm excited to see this one again. But, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll see how Nakaya competes knowing she's already won mathematically. Um, was she going to want to put a staple? Like, uh, honestly, like coming into this week, we were really interested in the matchup with Tara just because Tara is an ADC silver medalist. And so I was telling her today, I was just kind of like, look, I don't really care about any of the other matches. Let's try and finish Tara. <laughs> and all that is out of respect because Tara is so, you know, uh, such a force. She is so, um, she tough. does. Formidable. Yeah, she's so tough. Right. And, and she does have the reputation. And Hokage is trying to, you know, Trying to get a little She's bit of that. She's on the come up. She is. <laughs> I'd like to see them just wrestle. That would be fun. And you said Anna it did some wrestling? Mm -hmm. I think she wrestled in college. Um, I, I know she, she wrestled. I, I'm not quite sure to the level.
Season 4 of the PGF is brought to you by Subversive. Unique team format, nail-biting excitement, large payouts, elite athletes, and substantial media presence. Subversive. They're going to be in Miami on December 4th. Got four minutes. Man, the TJ fans. They're just always here. <laughs> the Colts for real. And I see as, uh, Dylan's putting $100 on the cult leader by knee bar, but it looks like that's something uh, he's going to take care of outside of the chat because he's not donating it. So I'll let, I'll let you take care of that, Dylan. Hey, on the ranch, <laughs> on their on their farmstead? Right. Maybe they have different different monetary values, you know? Uh, Maybe that's they true. have different. Like I'll give you a cow. Yeah. <laughs> I think they refer to it as a compound. Yeah, they're compound. Oh, yeah, yeah. Money might be, it might be a little different up there. We got 320. Nothing's really happened in this match. So for those of you joining us, Anna uh, Kanaj has the, uh, the kind of reddish uh, shorts. Mikai Jackson, uh, Jackson has the black shorts. Mikai is a brown belt at a planet Decatur right here. And Anna Kanaj is a brown belt out of 10th Planet Atlanta. Nice takedown by uh, Nakai. It was actually a really good snap down from Anna, but Nakai just went with it and turned it into a low single. You got some amped up fans in here. <laughs> got some babies going crazy over here. Womp, womp, womp. Super chat from Steven Zahn. $20 to Reese. Nakai. Uh, has a body lock. She needs to clear the knee. She needs to clear Lana, uh, Anna's right knee. Yeah, she's going to start stepping over into half. If she can clear that knee. She's going to be in a great position. You see Anna trying to play high guard. Nakaya, not the best body lock passer. She's no Nikki Rod when it comes to body lock passing. Yeah, that's what I was hoping to see, is her get a little bit of space and start using her footwork. Control the feet. Very PJ Barch-esque right now. Womp, 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 super chat from Colorado Trader. Nice. $4.20 for TJ. Beautiful work by both ladies. Um, I can't say enough how, how big of a fan I am of Anna's jiu-jitsu. I think uh, she's got really clean technical jiu-jitsu. But Nakaya has been a force all week. Really nice side-to-side -side movement. Forces the half guard on, I'm assuming, Anna's weak side, right? That's most people's weak side. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Quick shout out to Kai Johnson doing some great work in the chat. Appreciate it, buddy. Fifty seconds. Shop toehold.com for your custom leather flip flops and your leather bags. They've got some really cool bags that he's working on designing. Shop toehold.com. Oh, nice. Torianda by Nakaya. Nice, and she's really good right here. Really nice mm -hmm. passing, and she gets the pass. There's not going to be enough time. No. Good work by both girls. Yeah, nice guard work by Anna. Yeah, that was a, that was a good match. This match finishes with a draw. Next up for Team Supernatural Survival Gear, Tara La Rosa, her opponent from Team Ironclad, Kata Davis. All right. 
So this is the only female. This is what Tara says. The only female that's ever tapped her. Kata Davis. Feberato Plata. Womp, 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 super chat from Kayana. $4.99 for TJ. <laughs> she gets so disgusted. <laughs> but it's part of the, I don't know. That's got part of jujitsu. Got some gamesmanship going on here. I just don't <laughs> understand. Play a game. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I just don't understand though, because the whole point of a takedown is to get your opponent. Well, but Tara is, and I've noticed, like she doesn't want grips on her unless it's her grips. She doesn't want, she doesn't want it to go to the ground unless it's on her terms with that low single. So she wants to initiate all of the, you know, all of the offense. I think, which you know, that's a pretty good strategy. But Kata is not not standing up. Talked about before, it's kind of like that that old school MMA jujitsu versus the new school submission from anywhere jujitsu. Mm -hmm. It was kind of funny how. Uh, oh, that was. Dope. Wow, but she's into. Yeah. Kate is into the legs. So. Yeah, we tried that. We call that the wild. Uh, um. <laughs> we have four minutes and nineteen seconds left. We're just going to skip that. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Um, we've got Kata on the bottom playing her guard. And Tara, man, really needs nice. just control. I, th I thought it was hilarious, though. There's a standoff, you know, and we had seen, right, all these girls, they'd sit, and then Tara would do her thing, and they would all stand mm -hmm. up. Yeah. And Kata was like, no, nah, I ain't doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Tara tried to drag Good it to the her. middle. She broke the grip, and then she. Well, you're not going to beat Kato with mind games. She's working on her doctorate in clinical psychology. Oh, that's awesome. Oh. I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. Okay, Tara's in. But she's got both legs in the lock, which is going to make it tough to break either one. You need to isolate a limb. She needs, to, she needs to choose a leg. So One does Tara other. have offense on the feet? I mean, on leg locks. That would be interesting to see. Or I wonder if that would disgust her. Like, oh, <laughs> I don't do feet. I'm going to choke her. Nah, Tara does feet. She's got okay. some catch wrestling in her. Okay, okay. So Katie Davis, a brown belt out of Derby City MMA. And Tara, purple belt under Hoist Gracie. I wonder how long ago she got that purple belt. I know she told me uh, when she did the qualifier at Decatur. I mean, it was a long been? time ago. I mean, it was like 15 years ago. I'm not allowed to mention these things. <laughs> Dude, I tried to give her a brown belt. So you can be a Matt Scott brown belt. She said like, no. no. She was like, nope. She just didn't know. She didn't know how prestigious that is. No, she was. She emphatically said no. So. <laughs> <laughs> you think it'd be rude of me to just like try and promote her right now? Like on <laughs> yes, especially since she told you no. <laughs> Two minutes remain. That'd be assault by belting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to give you this brown belt. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be some other takers here in the audience. Another one of our team sponsors, Ironclad Methods. Ironcladmethods.com. If you want some wrestling for your BJJ, go to ironcladmethods.com. Man, TJ's Colts just, they're persistent in the chat. I mean, Cat oh, B says no. TJ for president. I think you mean, they mean Supreme Overlord, but yes. either way. Last minute. <laughs> Jake Elkin says, Scaff's handing out brown belts? <laughs> Sign me <laughs> up. <laughs> Mm 
And another huge shout out to an, a, one, another one of our team sponsors, Such and Such, Burgers and Tacos. We really appreciate Jason and his family and all that they've done for the PGF for 10th Planet Decatur. So if you guys are in town, if you're ever in Decatur, go to Such and Such, Burgers and Tacos. That's where Wallow and I went right after the, the transmission yesterday. Got those drunken waffle fries. You were able to get in there oh, in time? Delicious. Nice. Yeah, it's, it's good food. We've got 30 seconds here. Um, this match has been pretty even, honestly. We Kiana. saw a little uh, psychological games being played in the beginning, but since then, the jiu-jitsu. This match finishes with a draw. <laughs> Who did she toss yesterday? Was it Emily? Yes. <laughs> she did not like that draw. <laughs> No, I think it was respect. Oh, okay. I think it was respect. Coach. Let's get the money on chat for that. Okay. All right, so the commish is coming to the table, and he says that w there's a lot of interest in a Stephen Dana versus Matthew Boyles match, but we got to get the money in the chat. So if you would like to see that match tomorrow, Stephen Dana versus Matthew Boyles, we got to get that super chat up to $500. So I want you to put it in the description when you give the money. Let me know that that's what it's for. It'd be a banger, no question about it. Well, and we're ready for our next. And uh, next to the up. stage from Supernatural Survival Gear, Super Mario Gayor, his opponent representing Ironclad, Alex Hall. And womp, 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 super chat from Kyle. Uh, knee bars from Nubby Fingers, Supreme Overlord TJ. <laughs> Dang, I've never heard of Supreme Overlord. Well, they said TJ that's for a, president, and I think that's what he did. If you're no, a cult, yeah. what you know, there's a him. bunch of titles that I've kind of got written down in my journal that I would make, like to attain one day. I think right? I might write Supreme Overlord. Yeah, might as well. It's, it's a on, good goal. It's on your vision board? <laughs> Got a Pinterest board. You got to write it down first. You're Think right. it, write it, and then act it. Mm -hmm. But um, just a reminder again that five hundred dollars will go to the athlete. So you know we don't need extra matches. That's why we're not setting it up. But if you guys want to see it, then make it happen. And that five hundred dollars will go to the winner of Matthew Boyles and Stephen Dana. But if it doesn't come in, they're not having a match. And if you're a real PGF fan. You want to see some more Matthew Boyles. But right now we have Alex Hall versus Mario Gayor. Alex Hall on top position with the Black Rash Guard. Alex Hall's first time on the Mets today. Uh, he, was, he was in the finale at the beginning of the day, uh, and he's steadily gone down in the rankings. Right now he is in eighth place, not safe at all, uh, with 15 points. So he, he needs... If he wants to make the finale tomorrow, tomorrow, he needs to get a submission to secure his spot. Yeah, because we still have Evan DeWitt and Nick Saf left to compete. They're both sitting over there. I see Nick sitting next to Hokage and Evan sitting next to Kata. They're waiting to go, and they know where they're at, so they're hoping. They're one. And Alex is their teammate, but this is what I'm talking about. They don't care about teams. They're hoping Alex stalls out because they want to be in that top eight. That's right, Evan DeWitt. Uh, you know, right now is the first person uh, out looking in with 14 points, just one point behind Alex Hall. Uh, Nick Soff uh, with 12 points, uh, just a few bar a few behind. So if, if Nick, you know, gets a break and, and Alex doesn't get anything, that, that forces a tiebreaker right there. Do you think we could do a CJJ season? Maybe in Costa Rica. 185. CJJ. That'd be tough. It'd be, it'd be, so. To get that many people I, to participate? Yes, the people. And just plus, I mean, you're having 10 CJJ matches over a week. Oh, yeah, that'd be rough. Oh, yeah. You're going to need a lot of ice. <laughs> you, know, you know who the first person to sign up would be? Caleb McAllister. Oh, he would. He Can he everyone. make 155? No, he 185. Yeah, yeah. Because remember, season three, yeah, he challenged yeah. everyone at the draft. To so CJJ. Yeah. Oh, he's going for this buggy choke. Get himself oh, $50. Oh. oh, what a great adjustment. Alex thought he was safe. 
but Alex trains with Marcus Elkins, so I know he has seen that before. Yeah, I mean, from what I saw from Nokage for her CJJ experience, we're talking about 125-pound women. You can't do 185-pound dudes over the court, like, for 10 matches like that. Right. Definitely would not be healthy. Maybe we could do, like, a shortened season. So maybe, like, a two-day. be interesting. we got to get rid of these kids. <laughs> Says The Bachelor. <laughs> Amen. See, when you become a parent, you're just happy that it's not your kid. <laughs> right. Like, I do not have to deal with that screaming. <laughs> Two minutes and 20 seconds left. Matt, you might be, like, upset when somebody's on an airplane with you with a screaming child. Trust me, when it's your child, you just you feel old. Oh, everyone's eyes on you. And, uh, oh, that's awful. Uh, the point scoring slowed down. In, in the first match of the day, we saw a bunch of points scored. Um, but since then, it's been pretty pretty even matches. We've seen a bunch of draws. Yeah, Mario only has six points. He, he needs to turn it up. He, he needs to get some submissions. He needs to get the string. He's together. at six points. Six points. I feel like he's had a better season than that. I mean, he's had some slick jujitsu. I mean, it's beautiful stuff. Well, he's in a triangle right now, or he's looking to finish, but, man, I see Alex has already got one hand in. It's going to be tough for, for Mario to finish. Mario's looked good this season. Minute and 13 seconds. Well, it's like his first ma matchup with Steven Dana. He, he had him in that crucifix forever, but he couldn't get the submission. One minute. You see, he's trying to punch that hand back in. Alex Hall, that is. He's just, you can see, he's trying to punch it in. 45 seconds. You guys check out SupernaturalSurvivalGear.com for all of your jujitsu gear needs. They have amazing gear. SupernaturalSurvivalGear.com. Womp womp womp. Super chat. BJ's putting in twenty dollars for that Stephen Dana Matthew Boyles match. Yeah, story of Mario's season. Another match that he kind of you know, he dominated. Mm -hmm. No points. Yep. This match ends in a draw. Ooh. And Alex Hall I want to get a second with each of you when I can, if you will. I want to talk to both of you guys, if you have a second. After you shake hands, it's okay. <laughs> come on. Come on up here with me, Mr. Hall. I'm not sure where the points are and stuff. At the start of the day, you were right there in the middle of the pack with a lot of the people. Um, man, you battled this week. How did you feel coming through the PGF for the first time? It was good, just getting used to competing professionally still. and um, Maybe earlier in the day, going uh, anchor in that, the order kind of hurt me a little bit. I'm gonna need some help from other people. Um, but yeah, I feel like I've gotten a lot better and enjoyed the process, and hopefully y'all see me tomorrow. Hey, man, you earned a lot of respect this week. Thank you. Thanks, Super Mario. Get that mushroom and come on. <laughs> My man, do you know how many points you have? Probably like six. Six points? Okay. I'll, be, I'll be here tomorrow. You're going to be hanging out tomorrow with us? Uh, yes, sir. And I got the Billy Baxter super fight. Oh, super fight with you and Billy Baxter. Yes, sir. I haven't heard about that. Nobody told, nobody told the old yeah. Bobby here. Hey, Tell me about it. Uh, I don't know. Some, some what's going to happen? Like, what's the deal? What do you mean, what's going to happen? You're going to take this man's life or what? I mean, maybe. After fighting Alex, I mean, sheesh. I'm tired, but I'm hungry. You know, you know what I mean? Hey, well, rest up, man. We'll see you back tomorrow. Thank you, brother.
So Alex Hall is currently in eighth place with 15. So he's he's in there. Yeah. Okay. But a, a, as you pointed out, Matt, uh, you have Evan DeWitt coming up. He's only one point behind. Nick Saff also there. He's only three points behind. He, uh, Alex Hall is going to be he's going to be sweating bullets over there. We're going now. All right, our next matchup coming to the stage, representing Team Supernatural Survival Gear, Billy Baxter. And his opponent, representing Ironclad, David Garcia. Yeah, and David Garcia has got to be real happy. Juan Martinez, real happy, because Alex Hall now is the first guy out. If Alex would have gotten a choke there, well... That just moves them one down the ladder. So both those guys super happy. David Garcia, not as uh, he doesn't need this match as much as he would have if um, his teammate Alex Hall would have come through with six. But Alex has had a great season, particularly day two. And that's what this season seems to, to have been, is like each guy's kind of had their day. Nobody's killed it all three days. Now, Dane Leak, um, we saw him go against the Rock Troll, and they went to a draw. Um, will we see him in this in this match to, uh, right here, or will he decide to sit out? I don't know. But he was the guy the first two days. But um, <coughs> man, is there a team that's winning by enough points that we know that they're going to win, and their their people are going to get the one point? Oh, for today, no, not yet. Hasn't been a lot of points scored today. No. I know Matt's team won their first duel. Uh, I think it was like 21 to 10. Sounds right. Are the if, if the website is correct, we have uh, day three such and such has 26 points. Cantrell is 23. Iron class 22. And okay, so so Survivor kind of close has four. So yeah, it's it's within striking distance. Yeah, it, it really just comes down to these two teams then. Womp, 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 super chat from Kyle to the three fantastic commentators from the Gemini cult. We appreciate you guys. Thanks, Kyle. <laughs> David Garcia in the mount position against Billy Baxter. And for Billy, this match is uh, more about pride. He knows he's got a big fight tomorrow against Mario. I didn't know that Mario was the agreed upon opponent, but... It's going to be fine Mario for $1,000, $500, I'm, what is it, $1,000? I think it was $1,000 that Ally put for, or uh, a sponsor put forth, 1000 Yeah, I think it, it made her do two 500s. Yeah, well, I think she PayPal'd Brandon so Billy. that they wouldn't take that percentage. Well, I think <laughs> Billy's about to die right here. This is tough. He's got the arm trapped. Uh, David does. He's got the arm trapped, and he gets the finish. David, he's... He's my favorite tomorrow. And your winner by submission, David Garcia. So that's my prediction for tomorrow. I think Billy. I got David Garcia winning. Okay. So I just heard a rumor that Mario was coming to take your life tomorrow. How do you feel about that? I'm excited for that. Me and Mario are good boys. It's going to be a fun match. <laughs> How do you feel about the PGF this season? Oh, dude, had a blast. I feel like I was getting better and better every match. I mean, David's a fucking beast. Still, you mean like a child. Besides that, I thought that was doing really good. And uh, yeah, I hit a bolo earlier yesterday. So pretty happy about that. Starting gun's still a little weak. I got to work on that shit. But next time I'm here, I'm going to be bigger and fuck all these guys up. All right, man. Thank you for your good work this week. Uh, Kiai says he's got Samson winning tomorrow. Man, no love for the great Dane. So with that, uh, with that kill, uh, David Garcia is now tied with Maximus Rock Troll Jolly for fourth place. It looks like he's going to be going up against. Oh, here we go. Announcement's coming. All right, stepping in for Supernatural Survival Gear to face David Garcia will be Nathan, the Irish Taco Chambers. So I just know you're picking Dane Lake. And I know if you're picking Dane Lake, he can't win. <laughs> if you were picking David, I'd probably go Dane Lake. 
with friends I, like these. I'm just saying, <laughs> Aiden has a way of like he knows a lot about the PGF, but he mm. comes in second a lot. Okay, so he's kind of like the B team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a crazy triangle! He's going for oh, seven. Man. He's got this. He just needs to. Yeah, he's readjusting. He's relocking the triangle. Yeah, you see Is him he slow going? down. Right. He's got to remember. He's got to get that choke. Or does he need the nah, six points? he doesn't. This is just, he wants to kill another man. 15 seconds for the elbow genie point. Yeah, he needs to pull on that, tri yeah, mm -hmm. keep pulling on that elbow. Oh, look at the switch to the crucifix. What a smart play. And, um, really just smart. You heard him say, hey, you're going to lose the, f the extra point, so why don't we just go for a kill? Let's go for the six. Taco having a blast. Nathan oh, Chambers. Watch out for this Taco. arm bar right here. Oh, this um. deadlift arm bar. Oh, watch your neck, Taco. Well, at least uh, Nathan Chambers, Irish Taco, has his coach, Caleb McAllister, right there giving him directions. Wow, well, he's, got, he's got a monster on top of him right now. He's already survived a couple waves of attack, but we've seen David Garcia in this position before. It's just you got to be thinking about how, uh, how to keep David off your back. Huge thank you to Dr. Michael Cantrell, one of our team's sponsors and an orthopedic surgeon in the area. If you're in need of an orthopedic surgeon, go see Dr. Michael Cantrell. And this is where the magic happens uh, for me. David, um, so good. He's got really slick back attacks. The way that he traps the arm, look at that. Oh, oh is he underneath the neck? We can't see from this angle. Nathan, Irish Taco Chambers doing a good job protecting his neck. Yeah, he's got three more minutes, though. <laughs> yeah. Taco doing a good job of stacking and trying to get his head to the mat. Oh, this is this is that. He's so good at trapping the arm. This is why I'm telling you guys he's my favorite. It's because it comes down to EBIOT. There's another guy that's really good at trapping the arm. Yeah, it's Dane Link. I hear you. I hear you. He got the bounty for it. So did Mario, right? I think Mario Yeah, did. Mario yep. did. Mm -hmm. Oh, smother. Oh, you see some panic on Taco's face. Yeah, there it is. Some people call that the Dane Leak. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's tight. Yeah, there you go. Nice, David. The leg work, the, the way that he... And your winner adding another six points to his total, David Garcia. All right, David, 12 points. And Come on like down, that. Taco. Nathan. <laughs> All right, man. It's been really fun having you in here. Uh, you were a last-second replacement here for one of the top picks. You've represented yourself very well this week and brought a ton of energy to the PGF. Thank you for that. Is there anything else you want to say? Um, shout out to all my sponsors back at home in Drada, the coffee box Drada, that's a lovely little family down there, local coffee shop, coffee and Camoras obviously as well, sponsoring all the gear, as well as Smoke and Mirrors Barbers, and everyone from the hometown showing the support and 10 pound to care as well for accommodating me while I'm over here on my stage to prepare for future fights in Ireland. Thank you so much everyone, I really appreciate the opportunity and I, I hope to be back, and in fact I will be back, I'll do something, I'll get up there and let's get it going. Hey, you'll definitely be back Nathan, thank you for your work brother. So, so with that,
Uh, Dave Garcia now moves into second place with 29 points. Yeah. <laughs> second place. Yeah. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how the seeds are. Like right now, we would see if um, it went chalk. So that meaning one and four and two and three in the semifinals, we would see Reese versus David. Do you guys like, you love his Irish accent? Yeah. <laughs> I have to pick up sometimes when he gets to going fast, I pick up like every third word. I'm like, go slow. I'm from Alabama. <laughs> Or something about Camoras and smoke uh, and yeah. his hometown. <laughs> Draw it up. <laughs> Got every, every third word or so. That's right? what I'm saying. Yeah. All right, it's next matchup being announced. Iron Clad has chosen to rotate out David Garcia. And for them will be Evan DeWitt. And representing Supernatural Survival Gear, Jacob Mashburn. Huge match, huge match for Evan DeWitt. He's on the outside looking in, 14 points. Um, one point back from Alex Hall. Does he get it done, Egghead? What do you think? I, I, I am not, um, I, I'm not gonna say anything against Evan DeWitt ever again. Uh, he, he gets salty when I do. So uh, I'm just gonna say yes, he's gonna make it. Regardless, he's had a phenomenal week. Um, he Mashburn's did get some opportunities to show us his jiu-jitsu. So I really, I really love seeing Evan do jiu-jitsu. Yeah, Evan's um, had a great week. It's not the guy, though, you, you want to try and get a point on. That's exactly right. We've talked about it. Jacob Mashburn is the defensive stopper for Caitlin McAllister's team. He's so tough. Uh, but for all you watching, you know, we're talking about Jacob Mashburn's in the PGF white rash guard there, and Evan DeWitt is in the kind of orangish black rash guard on top right now with the ponytail. Has anybody finished Jacob Mashburn? Can you look at his uh, his standings this week, or the standings? I should be on the third page. <laughs> Don't do him like that, come on. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, no, yeah. no, he's only drawing people out. Again, the, the defensive stalwart. If you need to stop the momentum of the other team, you put in Jacob Mashburn. Yeah. I know he uh, got a draw against the Rock Troll. So that should tell you everything about um, his defensive prowess. Uh, we've got a hungry Evan DeWitt. Like, it would mean a lot for him to make the postseason, especially after his season uh, last year. Mm -hmm. MyFighterPage.com, our friend Mark McEthron is starting this um, this business here, MyFighterPage.com. He's building websites for the fighters. It will include a merch store, a social media marketing, and a sponsor page. So Evan DeWitt, black belt out of Derby City MMA. Uh, part of that, he trained at Queen City Grappling. Jake Mashburn uh, out of uh, Renaissance Art Academy Martial Arts. Uh, where his instructor, Caleb McAllister, is his coach here and his coach there. Yeah, and, and Jacob hasn't shown any weaknesses, obviously having not been finished, but it wasn't like it's like, man, you know, it's easy to get it on his legs or he's surviving the back. Like, it's tough to take a position on it. As a blue belt, he's very impressive, especially, you know, just being a guy that started because his kids was doing it. Like, my man's gotten pretty pretty darn good. Yeah, yeah Caleb says he's just a sponge. Uh, we saw such great improvements from the first Decatur qualifier to the second one where he, where he earned his at-large bid. Uh, but, but Caleb says he just has to show Jacob Mashburn something once, and he pretty much has it. We're getting spicy in the chat again. Sydney says Jake hasn't been finished, and he's exciting. Take notes, Claire. <laughs> Ooh, some shots fired. <laughs> this is crazy. You imagine if they had like a live stream, like the broadcasters, like Monday Night Football. <laughs> they were just reading YouTube comments. Oh no! <laughs> you just imagine There'd be some riots. Yeah, the Alabama game. Oh no! They're losing to Texas A&M. 
I can't even imagine the comments. The broadcast team is relaying what, like, like Roll Tide 4789 <laughs> says about Nick Saban. You know, they're just relaying, like, <laughs> Nick, being way too passive with your offense. That's the third <laughs> time we put it this half. If you Stop run being a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> if you can run the ball for three yards every play, just keep running. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying that was going to Nick Saban, not anybody in particular. I'm just saying that's what would be going on. Yeah. And so it is pretty crazy. But that's one of the beautiful things about the PGF is the fan intera interaction. Yeah. I mean, obviously we are interac interacting with them. They're able to give super chats to you know any any of their competitors they enjoy. They can put bounties out there and, and see people go for submissions they want. Uh, you can be playing you know fantasy jujitsu. Uh, just so many ways to interact and be a part of the community that we're building right here with the PGF. Yeah, through the good and the bad, you know, we, we'll take, as long as you're not being uh, profane, you know, you can be a hater. We will accept that, you know, we will accept what you, what you don't like. 50 seconds. You got to know Evan's feeling the pressure. He's got to find a way to get a submission. Yeah, Mashburn, Mashburn's a beast, man. He is a blue belt. Like, if I could get any of my blue blue belts to, to do what, like, Jacob Mashburn can do, survive, he he's, has an understanding of every position, whether it's a leg lock or just defending side control and just stuff like this. I mean, he's constantly moving. Um, oh, 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 20 seconds. Do it. Trying. Nice. Escape. And that's the thing. Like, he's not surviving. He's escaping. And I think that's the big difference. Yeah, exactly. I think you're right. It's making Evan do a lot of work Evan rather than stalling good, him out, right? Evan looks good. Oh, nice. oh my gosh. Evan not happy. But he's showing and us this match finishes with a draw. Jacob, you want to come up here? Talk to the talk to the people for a second, man. Yeah. It's going to be easy. It's going to be easy. Man, you battled all week. Thank you so much for coming out here and putting it on the line here at the PGF this season. Uh, maybe things didn't go the way you thought, but I really appreciate you coming out here. Is there anything you want to say to your people at home? Thanks, everybody, all my training partners. Thanks, my team. They've been pretty awesome. Uh, and thank you, Brian. I'm super glad to be here, and I'll be back. Definitely, man. Thank you so much, Jacob. We'll see you back next time. Evan. Multiple time PGF veteran, came back super hot this season. I'm not sure where you landed in the standings or not, man. Ninth. Ninth, oh man, first out. How you feel about that? Uh, super happy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, there's a lot of rematches I wanted this season. There's a lot of redemption for me. Got hurt my second match last year. Uh, had to hear my daughter chew me out for months. Why'd you get hurt, Dad? Why didn't we go to Alabama? So. A lot of work to get back here. Really wanted to be back Saturday. Uh, I did get to face Samson again. I did get to face Juan again. Couldn't put either of them away. Wanted to be back tomorrow to face Dane Leak, um, the jock trolley, wherever he's at. Uh, it's happy to be here. Appreciate everyone we got uh, working this event. Hopefully one of you top eight get hurt later. So Brandon hits me up. I get to come back tomorrow. But uh, otherwise, good part of this. Uh, I'm really glad to be here. Thank you. Wes Carter, my main training partner for a couple years, really appreciate him. Uh, Kata Davis is my main training partner. Um, it's her birthday too, so happy birthday, Kata. Hey, I know happy she, birthday. She doesn't want everyone to know that, but I'll give her a shout out anyway. She absolutely killed it. Uh, thank you, everybody. I like pretty much everyone here. Last time you'll talk to me, so. Thank you so much, Evan, man. We'll see you back next time, brother. You must not know Elijah's here. <laughs> Is Elijah actually here, or is he yesterday. in the chat? <laughs> That's the same thing. His spirit's here. Hey, but you have to be proud of me. That, that match against Manning Leverett yesterday was just beautiful. I mean, he, he displayed some amazing jujitsu, so some, some highlight reels he's going to be able to show to anyone if he wants to get any other competitions. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to seeing him again. 
womp, 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 super chat from Molly. $20 going to Jacob Mashburn. And next to the stage, to the stage for Supernatural Survival Gear, Jacob Arp. And his opponent, representing Ironclad, Nick Saff. And, you know, I've heard um, some of the competitors in past seasons talking about how PGF was very awesome for their jiu-jitsu career, just putting their name out there. They got so many clips and highlights and just, you know, Eddie's reposting the PGF stuff. So it's definitely a way to get your name out there. Eddie who? Eddie, Eddie bra. <laughs> <laughs> Look into it. <laughs> All right, so Jacob Arp in the PGF rash guard on top right now. Out of Gracie Jiu Jitsu, Savannah, uh, formerly of Scramble BJJ, and Nick Soft out of 10th Planet Decatur, right here, uh, from, formerly out of Rogue Combat Club in Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, of note, uh, Nick Soft is, is just outside the top eight. He's, he's number 10 right now. If he gets a break, he's tied with Alex Hall for the eighth spot. If he gets a kill, he, he, he's in the finale. Let's talk about Nick. Nick Soft. By far, to me, the biggest surprise this week. A guy that's a blue belt, only been training, you know, right around a year and a half, maybe a year and five months, takes out Reese. Taking out Reese was just humongous, and he's taken that momentum into his other matches. And look, he's in on a guillotine anaconda. He's trying to lock this anaconda up. He's trying to finish this. Uh, Kevin, that's true. <laughs> Nobody can see Eddie's post anymore. He's been talking about such controversial stuff. <laughs> Man, Nick looks like a beast. Nice attack. Uses that to get on top. And so I heard you guys talking about before. He looks like he's a, a little spark plug wrestler, but he's actually a, a gymnast. Yeah. Gymnast. Yeah, so all the, well, he wrestled, no. He just, he's one of those guys that's uh, prone to cauliflower ear because he's got the cauliflower ears of a guy that's been doing this 10 years. Mm. You know, the ears, you look at him and you go, he's been training 10 years. Well, no, he was a gymnast. Oh, nice attack by Jacob Hart. Oh, excellent job, Nick Saf. Kind of doing a little hip switch right there. Getting out of the shoulder crunch. And here's the, here's the crazy thing: Jacob Barb is usually the one taking the fight to the other, you know, competitor, but not here. Well, Nick's the one with everything on the line. You know, Jacob doesn't have much other than pride. Nick's got, oh, what a switch into a bicep slicer. Yeah, and now Nick finds himself on the bottom of the larger Jacob Ard. Three minutes. Yeah, Kevin, you probably got more exposure from uh, Brandon reposting your things than Eddie <laughs> reposting them. Two minutes and 40 seconds. Nice work by Nick Saf. Nick's done his best work from the leg lock uh, position. Another thank you to Amanda Sharon Realty for these beautiful PGF belts. And I think we will distribute the women's belt today and the men's belt tomorrow.
So you see the urgency from Nick, which he needs, but it hasn't been a good thing, I don't think, because we haven't seen him get uh, any real good attacks. Time. This match ends in a draw. So, Scott.